You know my. Man, I gained 10 pounds eating the red and the green M&M's, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I gained 10 pounds so quick. Without... <laughs> I'll stop it up today. How you brothers been for the week, man? Oh, we've been, been good. We've been good. Good. Yeah. good. We can't, we can't ignore the ratings. I mean, this light skin thing is working for me. And I heard it. It's going. It's going. It's going. It's Where do we start? Yo, 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 what's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome back to Let's Chop It Up with the brothers from Let's Chop It Up. Please follow us and like us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Please give us a ring the bell, get those notifications. And when we come on, tell a friend to tell a friend about the show. You know some couple of fly-ass dudes you want to hang out with on Wednesday night. Ain't shit else to do but Wednesday hang out with us. What's going on, my brothers, man? How you been, man? What's up, Rod? How was your week, my man? Ah. Uh. I had an eventful week. I did a lot of stuff this week besides rest. Um, I saw two movies. Um, I got my car back from um, the accident. Came out really nice. Um, you know, did some stuff with the kids. But um, the movies were the two most, um, you know. I saw um, James Bond and I saw the new Halloween. What what, what'd you think about the movie? Well, let's start with James Bond. Um, well, you know what? Let's actually start with the theater. Okay. I don't know what's going on in the movie theater. I know we got some supply chain issues and all that stuff, but dude, we went to the movie theater. They ain't had no ketchup. Nah. <laughs> yeah, it was no, a ketchup shortage. Remember, there was a ketchup shortage this year. Well, obviously, they definitely is a <laughs> ketchup shortage in the movie theater. They didn't have no ketchup. Um, barely had any napkins. Then we went okay. the second time to see Halloween. They didn't have no... um. Barely no had movie. any candy. I was going to say they had no movies. No, they had a movie. They had, barely had no candy. They didn't have no butter for the popcorn. You had to go upstairs and get butter. I'm like, yo, what is going on here? They, they, I don't even know why the recession saying was open. It yeah. didn't make no sense. They ain't have this, shit. This is a Long Island or Brownsville? No, this, I don't. Come on, G. Stop. <laughs> Yo, did you call it a recession stand? Did he say recession? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a recession stand. <laughs> that's what, that's what I thought, yeah, that's, that's yeah I'm glad right. you caught that. <laughs> so, um, no, nah, they didn't have no stuff, but. James Bond. Let's start with James Bond. James Bond was pretty good. I thought it was worth seeing. A lot of action or whatever. I don't want to give too much of it away. Um, they actually, you know, James Bond had retired, so they actually had a sister that actually replaced him as 007, um, which was pretty cool. But um, I don't want to give too much of it away, but I definitely say it was definitely worth seeing. But uh, Halloween, I'm not a horror flick guy. But um, I'll be totally honest with you. I was rooting for Michael Myers to kill everybody in that goddamn town. <laughs> no, the thing is this. The thing is this. I wanted Michael Myers to kill everybody in that town because that's the stupidest town I ever seen. Every year this guy comes back, kills people, and you won't move out the town. I don't understand. You can't shoot him. You can't stab him. You can't burn him. He keeps coming back. Guess what, guys? It's time to move. You can't live there. Yeah, that's he's he's letting gentr- oh, let gentrification oh. come in that neighborhood. Dude, <laughs> it's, it's just crazy. <laughs> Those were the dumbest people I ever seen in my life. Oh, man. I, 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 I was deaf. I was in the movie theater saying, get him, Mike. Get him. Yo, Kill all Rodney, the asses. Rodney, is this, is, does anybody finally live in the house? Because he goes to the house every time he comes back. Well, people I, have moved into the house. No, really? Yeah, there's... there's I don't want to. Re- no, I'm no, gonna say. It. I never, I'm not gonna say it, so you can tell. I don't care. No, there was Somebody a gay. A, spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! We're telling everybody now. There, yeah, 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 there yeah, was a ma- there was a male gay couple that bought the house and they were living in it. Together. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I guess Mike wanted them out of there. So he, but he got he got their asses. He got them. But I was cheering for Mike the whole movie, man. The whole movie. How is it real to put that house on the market? Like, what do you what do you say to to rent that house out? Well, and the thing is, the two new owners knew that it was Michael Myers' house. Of course they did. So, and that's yeah. what I'm saying. Kill everybody in the town because y'all too stupid to move. Stupid. You're right about that. Key ingredient. Right about that. Key ingredient. Every every good harvest. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But um, <laughs> that 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 that's that's pretty much the bulk of my week. You know what I mean? Of course, you know me. I usually get my rest. You know. At least six naps a week, you know. <laughs> but other than that, everything is good. No, it is right. Those 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 guys that came in that neighborhood that tried to gentrify that neighborhood, they thought they was gonna go to community board and complain about Mike. 
No, you can't. Mike, <laughs> Michael, Michael killed a community boy. Okay, but you know, we're going to go to community boy about this guy. He can't walk around with this machine. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, D, why was you wing- waving your finger like that? Oh, um, no, um, I, right now, my finger is is uh, hurt. I hit it against something. Oh, you were just airing it out. Yeah, yeah just like the way you just. Yeah. Anyhow, <laughs> yeah. Derek, man, how was your week, man? <laughs> hey, man, my week was on fire, baby. Everything was on fire. Um, I had a, I had a ball, man. Um, hey, listen, uh, between karaoke and and uh, uh, you know and, uh, and 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 talking to my son, man. By the way, I love karaoke, y'all. You gotta see me. It's, it's, it's something. It's something. I, 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 I need, need to ball. see that. I need to see that. <laughs> <laughs> Every song, man. You know. Are you are you a are you a sober karaoke guy Absolutely or uh, intoxicated? Okay. Better, listen, listen. The more you drink, the better I sound. That is my motto. Brother. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> no, but we had a ball, man. And uh, between that and talking to my, I got I had a call from my oldest son, so that was really good. You know, that's always always brings me up into into a high spirits. And then, uh, and then, and then the only thing, and then I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing a lot of looking around for car right now too. Is there anybody can help me with that? Um, my oldest, uh, my my goddaughter is, uh, we're looking for a vehicle for her. So that's been a lot of my time right there. Um, but I'm yeah. um, just enjoying family, man. Just, just enjoying family. By the way, there are no used cars out there right now. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's really the price, hard right now. The yeah, prices of hard. used cars went up. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, no, big time, man. Big mm-hmm. time, man. Uh, and they know it. That's the crazy thing, man. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the the used car salesman, uh, the owner, he just like jacked up a price. His his dealer's fee, just he just threw that on top. And I'm like, I'm trying to make, you know, he, essentially he, he told me. He charged me the deal for you, like something like six hundred dollars or whatever it was, you know, just a used car, just because he could. He told me that literally, like, yo, because I can, you know, because I'm gonna move it anyway. I'm like, okay, so we walked out, you know. Yeah, hey, you won't um, be moving it with us. <laughs> no, exactly, right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it was like, you know, that was it. But um, but yeah, it's tough, man. It's tough getting the car. But um, other than that, man, you know, spending time with my kids, man, and and, and, and family, and uh, and uh, and I'm 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 here with you guys, man. So I'm real good now. So let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give you a suggestion, Derek. Check, check the 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 uh, community boards at the senior citizens' homes. Sometimes elderly people are selling cars; they're getting off the road, or oh, they, you know, trying to get rid of a car that they had. So I would check that. You know, that's what's up. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah, that, that makes actually sense. They ain't gonna be using it no time soon. Yeah, no, I, I, I thought about that's that at all. Yeah, that's how the right yeah. there. Absolutely. What's up with you, Kevin? Yeah, what up, Kevin? Oh man, so the the week was cool. I'm I'm really excited about this week because my nephew is coming home for the first time in two years. I haven't seen him since 2019 in person. So um, I'm excited about him coming home, and he'll be here Thursday. So I have a chance to take him to see a Nick game and everything like that. So you know, I'm excited about that. Um, you know, I had an I had an idea. I want to uh, run across everybody, and I was thinking about it. So this is a very sensitive subject. You know, I wanted to, I was, I was thinking the other day about organizing a um, heterosexual day parade. And I thought about it and I said, I don't want people to think that like, you know, it would be trying to mock the gay community. But I was thinking about, and I want to know how people would take this honestly. Um, if, you know, cause, cause the, the um, LGBTQ community has been very, very vocal in how young people should feel about um, their sexuality and their right to choose and things like that. And I wonder, do heterosexual kids kind of feel like they get a little lost that nobody talks about them? Um, and it's, it's just one of those things where I'm just curious if we did something that can honor, you know, young people just coming to their own sexuality if they're heterosexual as well and do something like that. So I'm curious what the audience would think. I'm curious what people think. And I know at, at, at the first glance, people would be like, oh, you're trying to mock the gay community or something like that. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't do that. I don't, I don't want, I'm not an antagonist. And, and I think everybody that knows on this show, we joke, but we're not mean spirited. We None of us would do the show if we were mean spirited. But I mean, I just really think about that because young people as they're forming and things like that, there's a lot of peer pressure out there and things like that. So nobody ever really talks about heterosexual kids. Nobody really talks about that anymore. So. You know, I'm just curious what that would be. And I was saying it may be nice to, you know, let them have a moment to celebrate that. So maybe have like a little parade or get together for the kids, you know, and not exclude people. Just be like, oh, you, you know, you matter too. you know, people think about you, too. 
And there's nothing wrong with the way you coming into your own sexuality, too. That's how I came into my own sexuality. You just started liking girls. That was it. Nobody told me about it. I ain't choose it. It was just on me. That was just what it was. So if, if, if other people can express how they feel, I think heterosexual kids can express the way they feel as well. So I was thinking about that. You know, but other than that, my week has been pretty good, um, you know, getting ready for this cold weather and um, always anticipating that with, with cold weather to change the season comes some new bills. And so now um, I'm getting ready to go into this cold season, get the boiler right. But other than that, I'm ready. And this is I, I feel really good because it's a monumental. This is our first show of our second year. So this is going to be hot. I'm looking forward to it. We got some big surprises on the way and we're going to take another leap. And I tell you, um, our subscribers have really, really been faithful. They've been jumping. I mean, we've been moving. So thank you to everybody that's watching. And um, let's keep it going. So continue chopping things up. But the week's been good. D, how was your week? My week was actually boring. I mean, just work-related, nothing spectacular. I'm just beat tight, long days, uh, physical therapy, early in the morning, kicking my ass, getting off work late. There's nothing much, man. And then nothing crazy with me, bro. I mean, how I'm you really healing? How you coming along? Coming along pretty good. They want me tomorrow's my first day to be without. Well, they want, no, tell me to be without my cane in the house, but in the street, always keep the cane still. So it's, I mean, okay. you know, it bending it and stuff like that, and stretching out. Yeah, so trying to still get some of the swelling out. So, good. See, you going to PT? Yeah, man. Really. How many days a week you go to PT? Uh, right now, I've been going twice a week. Supposed to go three times a week, but I can't get the third day because my schedule's kind of bugged out. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So just so it's been it's been all right. But next time I'll go back is uh, cause I'm going yeah I'm going out of town. So it'll be next Monday. I think it is your Monday. All right. Don't worry. You'll yeah. get there, brother. You'll get there. <laughs> right yeah. now I'm just hip hopping around, man. Just hip hopping around, man. Yeah. So let's get to it, y'all. So anything else on your mind, Kelvin? Anything crazy, man? You good? All right. <laughs> Let me just say this. Now, before just I get this up, I want to make sure you get all this shit out. Go ahead, man. I just want to talk about <laughs> some foolishness. And I'm not directing this at any community in particular, okay? But I just want to end the debate today so people know and understand, all right? Especially my people, especially the natives. Let me say this. The L in salmon is silent. Okay, I want everybody to understand that. All right, I was sick of us going to the restaurant tomorrow. I have the salmon. Okay, there's no such thing as salmon, there's no fish named salmon. Okay, and I want everybody to know that the W in sword is silent, also. Okay, oh, and I was sword. Okay, so I don't blame, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't blame you. I blame the New York City school system. Okay, so I just want to say this. Salmon and swordfish. Okay, I want everybody to write it down. Put it on the index card. <laughs> what about what about what about, what about squimps? <laughs> Scrimps, right? Scrimps, right? Scrimps, right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's 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 my 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 my. This is foolishness moment because this is some foolishness when you grown. You know what I'm saying? And you go to like the fancy restaurants like. Ruby Tuesdays. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get the salmon. They had a nerd to try to enunciate. Like, it's oh, salmon. <laughs> you know what I'm oh, saying? Man. So oh, what man. happened was I was out with somebody one time and they, 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 I was, I didn't want to correct them, right? Then here come the, the waitress talking about, well, you like the salmon? I'm like, I can't believe it. She, I had to teach both of them at the same time. I'm like, yeah, I know y'all were wrong. But anyway, that was my moment. That was my moment. Other than that, then, oh, man. I'm good. I'm good. So I just want everybody to know, because if, if you was in doubt, you know, Google won't tell you that. But go ahead. Hilarious, hilarious. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got first on the chopping block tonight. Colin Powell uh, passed away um, the other day at the age of 84 years old. Served our country. There you go, the brother from the Bronx. Yeah. New York in the building. Any boss? Any thoughts on his brother? We just lost his brother here. Yeah, I, 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 um, you know, really had a lot of respect for uh for Colin Powell, and I think what he did and accomplished was really monumental. My father was Air Force, my grandfather was Navy, so I have a lot of a lot of respect for service men and women. And um, he he reached about as high as you can go. Um, I believe at one time was the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, um, and obviously Secretary of State. And so I um, I commend him. I commend him for uh, for his accomplishments. Ronnie, 
No, I just want to say my prayers go out to his family. And um, yeah, Colin Powell made his mark in history. And uh, like I said, my prayers go out to his family. Yep. Beautiful man. Uh, um, true American, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, it's a good story for us, man, for, for, for black men, you know, just being able to come up and see how far you can get in life, man. You know, he really put in his work, uh, served his country, served his community, held himself in high esteem, you know, carried himself well. And um, he was a great he was a great role model for a lot of people. You know, I didn't always agree with, the, with his side of the politics personally, um, but I always felt that he was worthy and deserving of the utmost respect. So really carried himself well. So. Uh, rest in peace. Yeah. Well said, well said, brother. That's it. Yeah. Call yeah. Brother Colin Powell. Yep. Oh, oh hey, yeah, Simone. Simone. What's up, Simone? How you doing, my sister? What's going on with you? Simone, we don't know what city are you from, man. Just let us know that. Where you, where you from, sis? Put it in the chat mm. and get a chance. Um, 65 NYC cops, NYC, New York City cops face this um, departmental misconduct charge in a George Floyd protest. I want to go with my man Roddy Rod on this because you come from that background. You probably heard uh, work with these son of a bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> nah, I, I know. I know. Like, um, it's sixty-five. It seems like a lot, but um, we got to take in consideration that that was during the time that there was a lot of riots in the city. They were setting fires in Manhattan and all that stuff like that. So usually after riots, not to say that anybody didn't do anything wrong but usually after riots you got to expect a high number of um complaints coming down from police officers on police officers at the uh, civilian uh review board but uh to me this is this is typical it's normal and some of those guys are going to face some serious departmental charges um i don't think anybody's going to get fired unless they have some cases where um they have things on video but most people are going to lose probably like a lot of vacation days you know, because mm. mostly that's pretty much the number one way they punish police officers is taking vacation days from them, which is actually a lot of money because those are days that you're going to be home that you get paid for and you won't have those days. How, how many vacation days do um, New York City cops get, right? Mm. A lot. It, it also depends on how long you got on. Like once you once you're like um, is it five weeks, four weeks, it's five weeks. It's like five weeks. And plus, you know, you get sick time and stuff like that so and then you can also build time as well like so you can take your overtime and time and that goes into your vacation kitty as well so officers they and in, in, in a way like it's a very stressful job you should get some time off i i you know i always took advantage of my time off you know I, we, know, I use we, know my you get some rest. we know you get rest i get my rest <laughs> but um i took my five weeks every year you know uh, so but um, yeah, they they get a they get a lot of uh, vacation days, but especially once you uh, you get the top pay. So, what well, question? Because I'm just saying, like these guys lose time. Does they time roll over if you don't use it, or you got to use it within a year? No, it rolls over. Oh shit! It rolls yeah. over. So yeah, these yeah, guys might still they might take time away, but they might still have time to have vacation. You, you can wind up building like thousands of hours on the books from taking like. Um, over time and time and um, not using all your five weeks vacation a year. So you you have a people that have thousands and thousands of hours on the books mm. that they can use when they, you know, when they can. But uh, yeah, you can accumulate a lot of time. Mm. Kelvin, you have any thoughts? Derek? Hey, man. Um, I, you said something. Um, that is a highly stressful job. Let's acknowledge that. Yeah, time, it is. Right? It is. I will never not say that it's not stressful. Right. Right. Um, that said, you know, um, at what point do they just do you, do you just say, hey, listen, um, common sense, you know, like where does the training come in? Because you got a lot of people, you know, I know it's a, I, like I know there's a, there, there are protests and all of that happening, you know, um, and I know that's a highly stressful situation, I'm sure, you know, but what kind of like where does the training part kick in for these people like you know what i'm saying like it seems like we keep hearing more and more of this and they keep in all and always the solution is well there needs to be more training like you know what i'm saying like well what are they training like what does the training look like for that because it seems like whatever they're doing 
Here, it ain't working. Yeah, but here, here go my question. If I had them six, 65 officers, my question would have been to them. When you saw your fellow officer on the other side of that door, other side of that glass, did you not see another officer or what did you see? Did your racism or what your thought, your 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 beliefs rather, I guess they you won't say racism, your beliefs are more than that officer that you saw now. Would you did you ever take themselves out of who they are and say, I'm gonna put myself in that officer over there that I'm about to attack? Did they did they, did they see themselves as the criminals that they try to arrest that good protest against them? What did they see that other officer as? Um, when you say other officer, what do you mean? Like, you I mean, think, like, I think you're, you're talking about what happened at the Capitol, or you're talking about what happened with the George Floyd? Because we're talking about George yeah, Floyd. Sorry, my bad. It yeah, yeah, George we're talking, about, yeah. We're talking yeah. about the George yeah. Floyd yeah. protesters. Yeah, my bad. And, my and bad. I think, right. I think what, what, what happens, um, right now, Rodney, and, and, and I think Derek may have touched on it, it seems like the relationship with people and police is so different. You know, when I was a kid, we was really taught that police was really helpful. Today, the era people are having it's, it's such a, a divide now. And I wonder if there's a way, if there is a way to kind of bridge this gap between the community and the police ever again. I, I know there were things that changed. There are different techniques like, you know, community policing and things that people say they've abandoned. But um, I don't know. First of all, they're having a problem with people wanting to be police now. They have a problem, you know, people, I think people are retiring early if they can. I think people just, because a lot of police feel like we just consider just the bad guy. So I'm just getting out. And then you have a percentage that are the bad guy, which is probably a low percentage, I would assume. Um, we got over 36,000 police officers in New York City. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You probably have some states that don't have 37,000. That's a Correct. small army. Yeah. Or whatever. Bigger than some towns. Bigger than yeah, some towns. So, so now... If Eric Adams comes in and we all believe he's going to come in and be the next mayor, Rodney, what could you do to try to change kind of the image of police officers as it relates to the people they serve? Or you think it's it, it's a ship that has already sailed? Um, part of me does feel it's a ship that's kind of already sailed. Um, when I was on a job, the one of the biggest problems with um, New York City policing that I saw was it was too much of a numbers game. The, the community is seen as numbers and not people. And that's one of the biggest problems. I, I said this on a show that before, like the cops are under so much pressure to get numbers like summonses, arrests and, and productivity. And no matter how much you bring crime down to a certain area, they still want those same numbers, which are not there no more. So now when those numbers are not there, you're basically sending the cops out to basically harass the community to try to get these numbers. That's what you're doing. So these are gonna create, um, they're gonna create incidents. Some, most of them are gonna be negative inc incidents. Right. So until they get rid of the numbers game, it's not gonna change. It's not gonna change at all, you know, because that's what it is at the end of the day. You got a commanding officer of a command that basically has to go to Comstat and he has to prove his existence of what he's doing to tackle certain crime in his precinct. And he's doing whatever it takes to, to get those numbers down so he can look good, so he can continue to get promoted. Yeah. And that's what it comes down to, you know? Gotcha. Yeah. But they, they, have to, they have to stop the numbers game. I remember when I first came on, the numbers weren't so, so prevalent and that basically cops went out there and they had discretion. And you had also community policing back then. So you had people cops that were actually walking beats back then and interacting with the community, the store owners and stuff like that. Those days are gone. Pol um, police officer Kelly, he took all that away. You know? but, but how does that play into the protests? You know, like you mentioned the numbers game, you know, mm -hmm. how does that, how does that work? Because this is a situation, this is a very acute situation. You know what I mean? Well, like you got a situation going on now. Is there, what, what's, what's the connection? You know? Well, the thing is, like I was saying earlier, like in the situation with the Vo George Floyd um, protests or whatever, I mean, we got to come to some understanding that there were people there that were agitating certain situations. And there were people there that were just peacefully protesting. Now, when you got a mixture of those and then you got cops working 12, 13, 14, 15 hours for the day, I mean, you got to, we can't take out of it that these people are human too. So you're tired. Situation. Yeah, yeah, you're tired. You got a long day. Everybody's yelling at you, cursing at you, you know what I'm saying? So you kind of got to see it from both sides. I mean, I've been in it. You know, every, everybody hates you at that moment because you represent mm -hmm. something that they're actually protesting against. 
but they don't know you personally. And the thing is, the officers are not properly trained to handle that emotionally. They're not. They're not. Not at all. Not at all. And then some people, guess what? Have shorter fuses than others. And you'll find out very quickly whose fuses are short. It's hard for me to understand. I, I once had to sit on a man a half hour, an entire half hour, and wait for the police to come in, you know, and, and, and take him away. And mm -hmm. um, and uh, never once did I violate the man, you know. Uh, believe me, I was agitated and, you know, I really wanted to get at him, but I managed to not violate him. I managed to, to treat him with respect and everything, you know. It's mm -hmm. hard for me to understand why that can't be done consistently, consistently, and I've had no training. You know what I mean? It's just mm -hmm. kind of hard for me to understand. It's but you know what I would think? I would think also, Derek, to be fair, you got some of them that's got to deal with a certain element every day. Day in every and day every out. Single day. And, yes. and for every, every single person day. that's real cool and, and people have done foul, there's some people out there that are really, really foul. And I think what would happen, I would just assume human nature if you deal, it's almost like being a CEO. If you deal with the, that rung of the ladder all the time, somewhere along the line, it's going to get on you. It's yeah, going to get on you. And eventually, you know what I'm saying? Now, what I've seen, um, I've seen a lot of young, immature cops. And that's disturbing. I, I remember I did an event once, and there were some cops. They were like 20, 21, 22 years old. They trying to stop girls at the corner, you know, in their cars and talk to them and stuff like that. So, you know, I think part of this is some seasoning that has to happen, too. Because you're 21, 22 years old, you practically, you barely an adult, and you got that much authority, you know. So that's some, I'm, I'm sure, Rodney, you've probably seen some people come through there, and you're like, they ain't going to be here for the long haul. Yeah, I mean, I've seen people come on in that, basically, in my opinion, that they shouldn't be police officers, you know. But that's on every job. There's, there's right, right. you know. There's right. going to be bad seeds in every job. Right. Um, you know, you got to, you, you brought up a point, Kelvin, a guy that's 21, 22, 23 years old. And then now he's going to be responding to people's homes, going in their homes, telling people twice his age, sometimes what to do. Right. You know? So then the thing is, you know, sometimes people can't handle authority. Well, you know, right. they don't see it from the other people's side because maybe they live differently. So they can't relate to the community that they're actually serving. You know, some of this stuff looks foreign to them, you know, and then you start to get you start to get a mindset where everybody in that community is bad, which is not the case. It's not the case yeah. at all. You know, I mean, I've had discussions with officers and they say, oh, you know, this place is terrible. It's a shithole or whatever. I said, dude, where you live? And your name somewhere around Suffolk or Nassau. And I said, dude, do you realize the houses here are worth twice the value of your house mm. where you live? Right. You know, so everybody here ain't no piece of shit. These some of these people is homeowners, business owners, or whatever. Everybody's not a piece of shit. Right. You know? Right. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when you're not educated about a community you're serving, these are the things in the statements that's going to be made. And then when you have um, a certain bad culture that teaches the young negative, then this is what's going to happen. We right. essentially become an occupying force, you know, and that's just the kind of feel that, that, that there is right now for a lot of people, you know. This is, I, this, know. Um, I'm sorry, Dad. Let me just say this lastly. Um, I, I worked with a guy once who used to sell drugs for a cop. Mm -hmm. And Rodney, that's the like, that's the craziest contradiction I mean, I ever seen. And I remember he was telling me, he was like, he was like, look, man. He was like, I actually used to sell drugs to this cop over in Ozone Park. He said, all the kids in the neighborhood sell, sell drugs to this guy. Sell for him or to him? No, for him. Oh. So this guy, literally, there was a cop that was had all the kids in the neighborhood pretty much selling drugs. And I mean, that's so right. Part of it is like, okay, so you turn around and ask those kids to respect law enforcement, they never will. Mm. But yeah, no. to be in that situation, that has got to be the worst when it comes to, to breaking trust or code. Because mm -hmm. remember how, how the drug game was in the 80s and stuff like that. It was so much money out there. I know there had to be cops that was involved in it. You know, back in the day was making $35,000 a year to start. And then you you arresting kids that's making that every other week. Let me tell you something. There was the, the corruption in the 70s and 80s, even in the 60s, was tremendous. It was totally tremendous. I mean, you had cops not only, you know, taking drugs, selling drugs. They were, some cops were using drugs, too. I mean... NYPD definitely has a history of corruption, just like any other police department. There are going to be bad seeds on it that take advantage of the opportunities. 
and they're going to make a lot of money. You know, they were they were police. So when I first came on the job and I worked with cops whose fathers who were on a job as detectives and they lived in neighborhoods where you they had like million dollar homes. But the time that their parent, their father was on a job, he obviously was taken because how else were you able to afford that home out in that neighborhood? Mm -hmm. Look at look yeah. at the thing the documentary you write of the chance for the seven five I think it's on Netflix. Correct. On Netflix. Correct. Oh, seven the seventy fifth um, in Brooklyn is is no. Yes. Yeah, uh, what's the guy's name? Um, I can I can see his face. I know you're talking about. I can see his face a hundred times. Um, <laughs> he 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 was the guy that um actually changed the job because they created the Marlin Commission as a result of him. I can't mm -hmm. think of his name. Dow Michael Dow. Yeah. yeah. Michael Dow was basically a very corrupt cop. Um, he was a drug drug user. He was stealing money. He did everything under the sun, and and, and thought he could never be touched. And Kelvin, you know? I think the salary back then was twenty eight thousand five hundred. I think. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. I think oh, it was something right. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, back then twenty eight thousand dollar job that that was a lot of money. You know that. Yeah. Was, you know, but I mean, he was making much more than that, probably um, stealing. Yeah. Remember, he came to work with a Corvette and all kind of shit. Yeah, he had a Corvette. He had a. I think he had a <laughs> boat too and everything. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. See, the thing is. They they came. There was a rule back in the days, like you had to report um, police officers when you were like a desk sergeant. Like you had to keep track of their checks because some guys were taking so much money that they weren't even taking their checks back in the day out the out the box. So their checks were just sitting there and pile up. So then they came up with a rule that because they saw that as a sign that you had to record the paychecks in in the uh, command log. But that's what that's the reason for that because these guys weren't taking their checks. That's how much money they were making. Damn. Yeah. Must be nice. Yeah. <laughs> Until you get caught. You get caught. Word, word. Speaking of somebody that want a check, Haitian gangs blame blaming for kidnapping US and Canadian missionaries. I think these guys they commit uh kidnapped 17 people, and I think they're asking for one million dollars per person that's getting kidnapped. So 17 million dollars. 17 million, right? Yeah. Thoughts in, thoughts on this gentleman? Must not be no black folks, man. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't make it's old saying we make we make terrible uh we make terrible uh prisoners, Host right? Okay. Yeah, terrible hostages. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. A million dollars a person. Are, would they think we worth that much all these people? So so, so were they responding to um the the recent um earthquake? Is that that's why they were over there? Yeah, they were missionaries, they were there to help. You know yeah. what I mean? So, is there anything, but is, was there any political thing behind this other than just trying to get some type of money? Because obviously the world, the, the eyes of the world are on that country with mm -hmm. everything that has happened. And then, you know, I saw some people with signs up saying, let the Americans free. Um, obviously, they feel Americans are over there to help. But was there anything else about that? <laughs> you what, know, up, what up, Shook? My what up, Shug? How you doing, baby? <laughs> any other, any other reason? Any, was there like a political thing behind it, other than just money? Is that you know? I don't, I don't know. I know they, this they is. Uh, I, a, I was, now, now, but they've been kidnapping people in, in Haiti for a while. I know some friends of mine that are from Haiti. They don't want to go because they are American. They won't be that kind of crazy ransom, but they'll, they'll, they can't. If they came in in town or whatever in the country, people will know, and they will want some kind of small ransom for them. So they, they are. Kidnapping black folks too. So what, what I've noticed is them. people. If you look at people that come to this country, oh, that's true, Tiger. All, yeah. all their, all their, um, all of their relatives. Like I, I know people that are from Dominican Republic or from Haiti, or whatever. A lot of their relatives that are in their home country think they're rich because they're in America, mm -hmm. and yeah. so you know they can do things for them and things. So when they come back, it's always a big thing: supplies and yeah. whatever like that. So when you come, when you go to certain places, you already know you're you're a target. They know, you know, and then yeah, I, just, I just don't think I just don't know how they think they're gonna. Those people are worth a million dollars a pop, man. You know, like who I think like like who you who you, you know. I, well, I, they're I, worth it to somebody. They're worth it to somebody. No, of course, uh, worth. My, listen, it was my wife. She'd be worth it to me, but I don't have you know. I don't have a million dollars uh, scale. Do you, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. think they're gonna get the million dollars, Kel? That's that. No, yeah, that's no the they don't think okay. they're gonna get the million dollars. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, I don't. I mean, it's. In my opinion, the way I look at it is it's not too smart of a gang because they're not going to get that money. No, and the wait. thing is, they you ever hear the saying, like, we don't negotiate with terrorists? Because that's what that's they're what doing. They're doing get. a terrorist act right now. Yeah, that's so what they're get. 
they, yeah. what's going to eventually happen is they're going to have to go in there and take them out. That's what's going to wind up happening because yeah. they're not going to get a million dollars, seventeen million dollars. And then if you say this far fetched, they give it to them. Like where are you going to go after that? They're going to they're going to go in there and tear you up once they get the missionaries back. And then the other thing you got to think about, if you solicit help from this country to, to send people to help when your country is in trouble, especially in a country that that has suffered like that, you never know. An administration may say, all right, if, if our people can't be safe there, we're not going to send aid or send help. That That's a possibility. Mm -hmm. People feel like, you know, if we're going to send people, we're going to put people on the ground to help. You know what I mean? Now, obviously, the government is not sending missionaries. But what I'm saying is. If you do that, people can retract if they want. These missionaries are Americans, right? Right, but the They're government Americans. doesn't send religious groups over there. Well, I'm just yeah, saying, they won't do it no more. Right, but what I'm saying is, are, are they gonna, you know, somebody that's gonna say, hey, are we gonna go over there to help, you know, or donate, whatever like that? Even other religious groups would say, hey, we may not go. Right, or is a foreign, or is another foreign nation going to take uh, interest in Haiti and decide that we are going to liberate these 17 people. And while we're there, we're going to keep our troops there because the whole place is in complete disarray. We're going to bring freedom to Haiti as America does, so to speak, under sorts, you know, under such, you know, uh, circumstances, so to speak. You know, we're going to we're going to bring we're going to bring some order to Haiti. You know, um, I don't know what you know. We don't know. You know, so I think we. I just I think I think Haiti has had enough of a history where people kind of come into that country and you know and and you know occupy and. and and have their own way with the place, you know. Um, so I don't know. That's yeah, it's gonna be hard on tourism. Yeah. Even if you want to go like a vacation, you know, you want to support black countries and stuff like this. It's gonna be hard for people to say like on the on the heels a, of them losing their or, or on the heels of them losing their their president as well. Don't forget about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, had yeah. The president assassinated. So yeah, that's a political tinderbox there. You know, you know negotiations. We use another country to, to to make a payoff. Yeah, you probably got a point there. Yeah. Yeah. You know how I know we have a chemistry? Because the first time ever, I think I read Rodney's thought just looking at his expression. <laughs> so, <laughs> and all but, say I is, didn't, but I didn't say it, though. I, all I say is, Rodney, I understand your point. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you like a point guard. He just hit me with a no-look pass. He, you know, I'm yeah. sorry. But, yo, good point, Derek. Good point. Yeah, man. Um, another, this is a crazy story here, man. Hold your seats for this one. Riders watch as a woman was raped on a scepter train, but no one called 911. These people actually were filming this with their cell phones. They weren't filming that. People they weren't filming that, were they? They were filming it, trying to get on social media. You know, like, I, I, I don't know if somebody's trying to be a witness or a social media. So, allegedly, I'm, I'm going to throw the word out allegedly. But that no one came been. to this person aid and watched this person get raped, uh, sexually, molest, sexually assaulted. That is possible. That's not possible. There must have been like a camera on the, on the, on the, the train or something, because people would not sit there and film that. She, it just, Derek, just wouldn't happen. Been, Derek. Just Derek, wouldn't happen. Derek, where Rod you been? Where you yeah, Rod, Rodney, please, please. I'm Go. going to my. Listen, I'm, I'm right now. I'm in my. I'm in my quiet place. We All said right? the because scepter. This is Philly. You, mean you would like to believe that that wouldn't happen. That this would is not Philly. Happen. In my this mind, in my world, that when I don't care where it was, in my world, that would not happen. <laughs> I don't know what world y'all live in, but in my nah, mind, I agree. I no, we, we're saying that this is this is the way society is going. It's possible. It's absolutely possible. It definitely happened. I mean, would you sit back and watch happen? Of course not. You wouldn't sit back. I don't think anybody here would sit back and watch that happen. But this is the society that is starting to happen. You got to realize we're a society now where you see a heinous act and your first instinct is to take out your phone and start filming it. Mm -hmm. That's people's reaction now, you know? I mean, I'm disgusted by it to hear that some people would sit back and watch this, but I believe it happened. Yeah, no, it's, it's, I, I mean, I haven't seen any video. It hasn't happened as far as I'm concerned. I can't. People are not. Yeah, yeah. Not, I mean, I can't believe it. People are not. Some, not, some not, people are afraid to intervene. Some people are afraid to intervene, but I think I, I agree with you all. I can't imagine that. Like, I can't imagine anybody sitting there watching a woman or a child um, in distress. And not intervening in some way, and I mean, to me, I mean, think about it. We 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 covered the story when when the uh, concierge watched somebody, you know, punch a woman, and didn't do anything. So you know, we, that's where we're at now. That's where yeah. we're at. But to do that on a train in an enclosed environment that you're you're sitting there in the same area as the perpetrator, and you do nothing, 
at this point, several people, especially if there's men on the train, you would think would act. There were, there were no men on that train. I promise yeah. you that. You know, well, that's true. I agree with Derek. In, in, in the definition of man, there were probably no men on the train. On that train that but um, <laughs> I, I think that a lot of people today are just not built to be able to do something about something like that. You know, they're just more worried about themselves and going about their day. The average person walking around, I mean, you got to realize I did 22 years on NYPD. I've seen some of the worst of the worst. You know, I've seen people watch old ladies get their pocketbook snatched and knocked down and nobody did nothing. You know? yeah, that's that's there. Yeah, you like that's what you do. Right, go ahead, Derek. Literal rape, though. That's something different. There's something that is so demonic and intimate and just completely evas and like invasive about that man that that it just boggles my mind that nobody could say nothing like a whole train full of people nobody could pull them off nobody could do anything you know that other than sit there and and, and film i saw where they 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 i don't know that i saw what they what they said uh this was a spokesperson it said uh someone should have called 911 you know I mean, and maybe it wouldn't have happened. I don't think calling 911 would have helped because by the time he's bold enough to do that, then, you know, he's not going to worry about somebody calling 911 and they're not going to get there before he's done. Somebody needs to physically do something, you know, and I just can't believe that we don't have enough people, that we just don't have a wherewithal of, I don't know, intestinal fortitude or whatever you want to call it to just kind of physically stop this dude, man, stop something like that from happening. Step in. You know, that shouldn't even be a, a, an issue. So, I don't know. That's just my little soapbox. I'm getting off my soapbox. I can't believe that. I'm serious. Yeah. Sad, man. Very sad. Yeah. Uh, Georgia High School only punished black students at the Confederate flag protest. So, I think it was some protest with the young black students. It was protesting this Confederate flag. I think the white kids that were wearing the Confederate flag or supporting the Confederate flag actually spoke of the black students and said, we have white privilege. Because this would never happen to us, which is show that the black students got, arrest, got in trouble as uh, soon as uh, uh, when this protest happened. Any thoughts on this, gentlemen? Did you say Georgia? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I keep, I, I keep, <laughs> you know, I keep saying least. something. <laughs> Atlanta is in Georgia, but Georgia, all of Georgia is not Atlanta. Like, people need to understand. I mean, that, that's just what it is. I mean, there has been a long running history with a lot of these states especially in in the deep south that is always going to present this uh reaction that's just what it is and to some people they're always going to defend that and it, it's it's a culture it's part of the fabric you know so i mean the real I, I wish i could say i was surprised but i'm not it's just what it's just what it is you know and people think um, because so many people have migrated back to the South that the South has changed. To me, the South isn't. Every time I go down to the South, there's a reminder. Right. I always sense it. I always feel it. It is always this thing. And you you can, you know, people say it's it's more um discreet in the North. I'll take that though. You know what I mean? At least fool somebody. But there, I mean, it's just very, very blatant. So that that doesn't surprise me at all. And that Confederate Confederate flag, there is a loyalty pledge to that flag. I mean, the Lord, that's the loyalty we saw January 6th. That loyalty is combined with fanaticism. You know what I mean? And so some people feel like that's a banner that they stand under. And as a result, um, not not shocking at all, you know? Yeah, I don't I don't think we're gonna see that 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 fabric of the South change in our lifetimes. I really don't. I hate to say it, but that's just the way I see it. I mean, that's they feel, they say that's part of their heritage, that's part of their history. And mm -hmm. you can see they're passing it on to their kids. And then when you hear them talk, everybody got a different explanation for that flag. You know, mm -hmm. so it's not even the same. It's not even the same story that they stick to. It's all spread out with nonsense and ignorance. Yeah. It's tribalism, but, but, man. Yeah, you know, the tribalism is, it's just, I, I, I think the, 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 the South is more noticeably tribal. You know, they don't hide, like you say, they don't hide it, they don't have to. It's just part of their culture. You know, mm -hmm. is, is it worse than, than the North? I don't know. Um, Kelvin likes it better in the north where they hide it. I don't know if I, I don't know if I prefer that. You know, um, the, the 
but you know, from what I understand, the worst, the worst, worst state is Oregon. If you want to hear about it, <laughs> they actually yeah. had some stuff on the on. They actually had laws uh, when it was uh, that kept people out, that kept black people, uh, black slaves out of Oregon. That was like it was literally illegal to be black in Oregon. So, yeah. <laughs> so that my, my, worst history. Yeah, but this school, this school thing, man, it's, it's, it's going back. Going, just want to go back to the school thing. I think we got to figure like we got to start somehow, some way, having our own education curriculum. But this is this is insane that these young people will keep on getting violated over and over again with the things they do. That it's a double standard in these schools. You know, I seen double like see, the black boys are higher rate of getting suspension than any other yeah. any other person in the school. Now we got these black kids that just protesting against the people that were protesting for some shit that's like disrespectful to folks. You know, like and and it's just it's, the double standard the the chancellor of, of schools in Georgia, I don't know who he is. Um, like maybe we need to find out who he is. And we wanted to see what his thoughts were. Did he have any comments on this? I don't know. But you mentioned something just then, D, where um, you mentioned uh, black children getting worse, receiving worse discipline, um, you know, harsher discipline. Um, and, 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 and that's everywhere. You know, that's just not just Georgia. You know, that's mm -hmm. here in New York as well. You know, so, mm -hmm. you know, maybe we need to have that conversation or maybe this is just an example of that conversation. You know, the, the fact that um, we our children do receive harsher discipline uh, for essentially the same act or a comparable act, you know. Um, and um, although I would argue that theirs was probably worse, you know. Um, so 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 maybe and, 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 what, and, and what's the cause of that? You know, why don't why does that keep happening to our children? You know, how do we keep that from happening? So that's something I think we probably need to start talking about instead of necessarily, you know, the subject well, of racism or something like that. Well, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me um, clarify what I was saying, Derek, because you make a good point. I was saying, like, I don't really see that flag flying here in New York. Oh, I'm sure. sure it, I'm sure well, they, you, they live in Long Island. It's a little different. I've seen it in Long Island. No, I, I, I get what you're saying, but what I'm saying yeah. is, in other words, you know, the reality of it is this: you know that it exists, you know that it's around. It's just not, you know, as prevalent as far as the the, the public display. Now, you're right. I grew up in Long Island, so I understand. I, you know, I know where those lines are drawn. I saw it last year. <laughs> you know, but but it's like one of those things. Well, I put it like this. However many times you saw it, you go down south. I mean, yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, you got monuments up with it. You know what I'm saying? I live in Tennessee, 13 it's, years of racist condensation. There's underlying thread through the social construct in that area. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, we we're, we're we're used to that growing up in Long Island. We have our own little history. As diverse as Long Island is, it's also the most segregated place in the yeah. nation. Yeah. All right. Um. So yeah, we definitely know all about that. Um, but I, I agree with D. It's not going to change. You can't wait yeah. for it to change. You'd have to do what you have to do. But it's not going. It's not going to change. Nobody's going to. Like I said, nobody gives you anything without some type of resistance. So if you want to change it, you have to. And D makes a good point. You want to take your money and pool it and put your kids in your own education system. Then we have to do that. But that's that's something that other groups have done, and it, it, and, it and it works. You know what I mean? So I think we have to do, you know follow suit. But. Um, I'm not surprised the South is going to be what it is. And if you live there, um, I'll say this, the people that live there already know where those lines are drawn as well. And, and those oh, yeah. people, they, they don't rock the boat. You know where you're supposed to be and where you're not supposed to be. Right. I, I remember talking to my father about it one time. He said, he, you know, he grew up in the, North, in the South, obviously born in 40. And he said, you know, the funny thing about it is I never really felt like I felt I, I experienced racism. He said it was just understood that there were certain places you just didn't need to be, you know? And that's how right. they just thought of it. You know what I mean? Right. You just ain't no you have no business being over there. Right. You know? And uh yeah, but it was racism. That was the the, the ultimate, mm -hmm. you know, the you know, seed or whatever that's the subject, you know. So no question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Speaking of some old no. crazy ass shit no. again. No. Florida's in the news again. Three eleven year olds arrested for plotting and setting uh for Florida setting the school in Florida on fire. Wow. They thought, now this, I know some bullying going on, but this is just Florida, so this could have been anything. This could have been they. They didn't like the color of the school flag or something. They didn't, Florida, but uh, thoughts, gentlemen, on Florida and eleven year olds in a fight. Man, well, what were they upset about? 
think they're trying to get certain kids, right? They want to get certain kids out the building or some shit like that, some crazy shit. They they had a beef with certain kids in the building. They just want to set the building on fire. Yeah, and they want to trap the bad kids or something like that. Burn the bad kids on the. Oh, the building. rude kids. I think it was the rude. The kids, rude right? kids. Yeah, yeah, the rude kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So they basically. 11 year old they're going to set a fire in the school to try to kill off the rude kids and not realizing how many kids they're going to possibly kill period you right. know but i mean it's it's I, I it's sad when i hear people that young with a mindset like that you know it's just it's actually scary to me you know to even get together and you get three you get you get three people to be able to agree on something like that that's that's very scary to me that's a kitty conspiracy, you know what I'm saying? So it's like they all decided that they want to get together and and do this together and commit what arson, perhaps murder, you know? Or, mm-hmm. So what was the point? You know, it's it crazy that they think like that, as you say, at at, at that age. Um, shouldn't be thinking about stuff like that, man. It shouldn't have that kind of stress on them, you know. Um, at we, 11, have to, yeah. we have to kind of we have to kind of pay attention to the stress that our children are under right now too. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like. Yeah, you know, we're dealing with some with some unprecedented times. So, um, and there's very little, there's very little uh, uh, guidance that we can give them at times um, as adults because we, you know, just dealing with the COVID, the pandemic, the world, you know, the recession that we're dealing with. This, you know, this this there's nothing there that we can really tell them. You know, um, we're, there's just like an environmental stress that just you know just permeates everything. You know, from the minute you turn your television on to matter you know if you go out to to eat if you you know if you just walk in the streets just out there and um well, and we just have to be reflective of that and i think it's probably reflective of that you know if the root cause of bullying no. it needs to be addressed i think it's worse than bullying you know i think it's beyond bullying you know I, but yeah bullying absolutely out of respect to my mother i think what we need is the belt the return of the belt the belt, the belt has to, the belt, the belt has to come back. That's what it is. The return of the belt. I know it's not popular, but somewhere along the line, we've deviated from it. It's got to come back and make an appearance. You know what I'm saying? Because I got beat for everybody else. I got beat so you wouldn't have to get beat. So what I'm saying is, yeah, so, I wasn't thinking about. Stuff. I wasn't thinking about. Yeah. Doesn't do anything that involves matches. Whatever, yeah. like that result, it'll be. I mean, that's yeah. just the bottom yeah. line. But, but kids, <laughs> honestly, they don't. They don't know. They don't. They really don't know all the stuff that you think about. They're not thinking that far. They're yeah, not, yeah. Uh, back in back in the days, Calvin, they would beat the arson out of you. No, they beat out of me. Would have never got that far. Yeah, yeah. They well, beat tell you the truth, <laughs> back in the days, the beating was the medicine for a lot of stuff. It was. You know, it there was. was no ADHD back then. They would that's be out of you. Let me tell you. I, you know I, when I set the garage on fire, that's why I don't smoke today. Yeah. That be it, anything that involved fire, I don't mess with. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> you know why? Because they would set your ass on fire with a belt. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's it. That's it. You know, tear that ass up. <laughs> well, let's go, Jimmy, man. Take us our first commercial break tonight, brother. I'm Dawn Kelly, and I'm the founder and CEO of The Nourish Spot, a healthy food and beverage haven in Southeast Jamaica, Queens. Chosen in 2019 as Micro Business of the Year by the U.S. Small Business Administration. My adult children, Jade and Owen Duncan, and I established The Nourish Spot to provide affordable access to healthy produce to help our neighbors combat chronic diseases, to provide jobs for a diverse community youth. And it's no secret that small businesses play a critical role in the local economy. It's also proven that community is vital to the growth of small businesses. So come, let us nourish you at the Nourish Spot. We're open Monday through Friday, 9.30 to 6, and Saturdays, 10 
<laughs> Wrong in the snacky snack on. <laughs> I'm, auctioning <laughs> off, I'm auctioning off one of my mother's game worn jerseys and belt. This is an autograph. It's been <laughs> y'all remember that? Yeah. 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 That, see, that's you don't even have to. That's all you need, right there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So you never, I never heard that sound. <laughs> I never, I never got beat, y'all. Did you know ass what was deep, man? Never, never got one. Never got one, bro. Did you deserve wow. some deep? Nah, nah, nah. Nah, see, I don't believe that part. He deserves yeah. something now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not, but yeah, you're right about now. But not, but nah, I never got beat, man. Word up. Man, this weekend, man, we got a good treat, man. When hip hop came back, like the essence of hip hop, great songs. When you had the positivity and you had some of the street stuff and you had the, the b boy in, you had dancing. Karis One versus Big Daddy Kane at the Barclays here in Brooklyn, New York. I was in the house. I was, I was actually very. Happy that I got to witness that live to see these two great legends and some of the legends they brought out there, man. Um, guys, your thoughts, you know, we some hip hop heads. Your thoughts on this one, man. Well, D, yeah. give us a little bit first. You was in yeah. the building, so give us a little. You know. so I got there late. I was on some CP time. That wasn't really my fault, but I got there a little late. But I got there enough time to see uh, a good part of the show. The building was nothing but love, man. It was like, it was the who, who's a, who was there in the building. It was, it was it, very entertaining. It was, I mean, like you guys saw on probably TV, Fat Joe and the name, the names, and just the old school catch. Just to see that our guys are around and they getting close, like getting closer to 60. Because, you know, it seemed like we losing cats every day, but it was just genuinely love. Like nobody was acting like uh, Karis won one or Kane won. It was just like hip hop one. It was our culture, our childhood, the songs, it was everybody. You know, songs like they had brought you back to a time and a place where you was at. Like you know, from uh, like the bridge over, you know, Queens cats was mad of it, but we could not stop dancing to it. Yeah, shit yeah, was, yeah. That shit was fire. You know what I'm saying? When Kane went, uh, 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 you felt like yeah. you was the shit again. Like you was ready to do, you know, all your little dances and all that kind of stuff. And it was just, it was beautiful, man. Just to see him, like, and to see them in good shape. Like these guys looked like they were still in good shape. Like Kane, breath, they like, jumping up and down, and still rhyming at the same time. Like the age of fifty something. Yeah, yeah, that was impressive. Yeah, 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 very yeah. impressive. Trey's one's voice, his confidence is still, and he never lacked a confidence. So he just, in the way he still can, it was just dope. It was really dope. But just seeing DJs scratch records. Damn, what, what happened? Like, man, they, you know, they brought out certain people. Um, right. You know, they came out, Das Effects was there. Um, it was just, it was just, it was just dope. Um, nice and smooth. Nice and smooth there. Great. Um, wow, what's other guy? Um, Spark Mad Ism. I forgot the dude's name. He was there. He performed. So it was kind of, it was kind of dope, man. Really dope. I thought. I don't think I was mad. I thought Karis was going to end the show with the bridges open. I was kind of. I was like, why did he bring that out so early? Like not early, but kind of. I thought that was going to be the last song of the night. Okay. The crowd loved it. The crowd was loving it. So. What What would you say like the um the age range of the crowd was like our age mostly? Or you oh, said yeah. you saw a lot of young people there too? Uh, mostly our age. Like mostly oh. our age. I would say like forties to fifties to sixty year old people was in there. And just like old B boys, you know, see old a lot of old gangsters. So a lot of old gangsters there. A lot of okay. old throw, a lot of old throwback chicks were there too, thinking they still got it. It was out there too. <laughs> <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot of button guts out there. A lot of button guts. Yeah. You know, so, 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 but it was, it was, it was a good night. Yeah. <laughs> and it was I, so crazy. I, the police were. Everybody was on chill. Yeah, everybody yeah, yeah. Everybody was yeah. on chill. It was like it was just the coolest night. Everybody, Listen, man, just, we, just, we, after saying what's up, like you can't do yo, yeah, what yeah. up, man. Everybody I mean, was on chill. Because of the vibe of the crowd, I mean, you got older people there. People got families, exactly. kids now, or whatever. It's not wasn't young and rec reckless. No, nope. you know, I mean, I saw, I saw it, and um, I thought it was dope. Mm -hmm. The thing is, I just always could never connect KRS One and Big Daddy Kane, like for that to be like a versus. I would have never thought of that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I thought it, I thought it was good. I thought it was definitely good for the culture. You know. But um, it I, I can definitely relate to what you're saying, D. It it took you back to where you were when that song was out. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's that's kind of what I got out of it when I was watching it. You know, it took me I, back. I, I thought it was I thought it was good. I it, I forgot the Karis one had so many commercial. I mean, so many radio hits. Though I forgot about that, mm -hmm. like the sound of the police and all that stuff like that. I forgot about that. I thought it was good. I thought it was competitive. I thought I knew both of them was gonna give a good show. That I did know, so I, I really enjoyed that part of it, and I do like the kind of competition part. Even going back and forth with with Scratch and Kid Capri, I thought that was a good look, and I, I thought you know what it what it's doing is, and see, I think hip hop set itself up 
for where we are right now, which was which is not a great thing. They set themselves up to they started that they, they imposed their own age discrimination within the genre. That was something that hip hop did to itself. Mm. It's always that was one of the distances. You just old, you whatever like that. Whereas realistically, I mean, Kane at one time went off a rip where he was just flowing as fast as anybody. You know what mm. I mean? And so now I think they're going on tour. It is it's giving them a lot more exposure. Karis one to me has not been on one of these big stages like this in a long time. Yeah. So it introduces them to another generation. And and now I think it kind of restarts them and stuff like that. I was wondering, and this is gonna be kind of unfair to ask, if this era of hip hop now was the first iteration of it, would it have made it 50 years? Yeah. You mean the one that we're in right now? So in other words, if you started off with these people, the little Nas X's and the people that are out now, oh. would do you think no. it would have lasted the 50 years? No, it, would, no, it, would, it wouldn't have lasted five. The foundation, the foundation was so tight, yeah. right? Yeah, I think yeah. The foundation was tight enough where they're yeah. able to to now get old with hip hop. You know well, what I mean? Have to, you have yeah. to remember that this, this new generation of hip hop is built on that old foundation. And what do we have to do? Remember, um, there was a lot of resistance to hip hop. You know what I mean? Um, when we were coming up, we had to watch. They had to, we had we needed Rock him, who would, who was just a master of lyricism and music, and never said a single curse. All right, so all of the music was great, and it could be played on the radio, and it could reach the masses. You can't do that with this new generation. All right, but but but, but they're able to have the platform that they are, they're able to have the freedom that they have because the foundation was built. Remember, there was a time when hip hop or rap music was illegal, essentially illegal, let's say in England, all right? Um, but, you know, so now, but, you know, but, but now you've got uh, great music coming out of England, great music coming from, you know, coming internationally. If you ask me, hip hop lives internationally now. I mean, the true form, you know, they're still keeping the b-boying alive and everything. From, from our from our generation, like in Japan, Japan is killing it. Germany's killing but, it. Yeah, so yeah, so but, but that it. it was the, it's the culture. What they didn't this generation doesn't have the culture of it. Like you got killed when you think about it, when I said it, you had b boy like yeah, yeah, like crazy ladies, all those kind of cats. When you had the dance element to it, you had yeah. the graffiti. The, you yeah. know that was part of it. Right. And it was and it was and remember this was given this generation had nothing. So you took like Flash invented the crossfader. You know they had like it was a rent party when up in uh, up in the Bronx. You know what I'm saying like. Those right. kind of things, that was a right. culture thing. If it would have right. came out now, it was all commercial and me messed up. No, it would have no. it it would have faded out just like it, anything else. It would have been disco. disco. You would have yeah. it been disco, is what it yeah. would have been. Right. Yes. right. Go, back, go back one 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 comment says our generation were the actual creators, the new generation is sampled and overproduced and redone. Yeah, and that's and that's it. You know, that's what their sound is. You know, even though uh hip hop and rap was was created, you know, it was um uh, you know, we off sample sample music, yeah, mm -hmm. off samples and literally taking somebody's music and just you know and playing it and remixing it and making it different. But what they're doing now is is something completely, completely, completely different. You know what I mean? So everything that they have is is rehashed, and um, and that wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing if they were doing something with it. You know, um, but I think they, I think, I think they have the, I think the value system is different now. You know, our value system. We were in, in our generation when it was we were we were creating something. We were creating a movement. You know? Um, it was ours. We were creating something that was uniquely ours. You know, we had language that no one understood. You know what I mean? For us, you know, they don't have that now. You know what I mean? They have now. It's it's just all blind commercialism. And, you know how much right. money you're making, right. how you look, and all that other thing. It's just not yeah. built on the same. It seems a lot more disposable to me, I mean, and that's it why is. you hear. The radio we're taking it back in the day the 2017 i mean you know it's just that that's how it is now so like and, and i think some people just gotten lazy with it I, and I'm, I, and this is probably going to sound like a bias and it may be they started making music for strip clubs i understand and that's what i'm told so yeah. so that's yeah. why it's just about the hook yeah. so but when it left new york i think a lot of the lyricism i think it left new york it bounced out to la and then it just went to the south and it just stayed there and yeah. so, you know, I think you do have some lyricists that are still around, like Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole and people like that. But a lot of it, to me, has become a lot of really watered down in a lot of cases. But it's in the But even 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 in the even in the commercial gimmicky stuff, let's just use Humpty Hump. 
What a good gimmick. He yeah. was two he was the same person. Yeah. But yeah. he had two different that was a gimmick, but it was a musical. It was a party record. It was just like it was just like dope. It was, it it was, was creative. Like, like yeah. me and the me and the biz when he had the dummy, me and the biz. That like yeah. that was that was the yeah. that was some different kind of stuff, man. Even like yeah. if you look at MC Hammer, what Hammer even brought to it. But he brought like even that ill West Coast dance into it. Hammer still was bringing a show to it. These kids have the show is just like I'm throw myself in the crowd, take off my shirt with a bunch of jewels on. It's just yeah. some weird, weird ass hip hop shows now. Like God, some weirdo shit. So no with, a, with a seven hundred dollar belt in my pants yeah. under my ass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That, but that's, that's how, the town. Yeah, we have like, variety though. That's the thing. It was about variety. You know, you 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 know, you had different sounds, different images. Now it's all the same thing. Yeah. When like, you turn corporate, the idea of a corporation is to make more money. So what are they gonna do? Keep putting out the same thing that worked last year and the year mm -hmm. before that, the year before that. So now you wind up with the same genre of music. Everything sounds the same, the same sounds the same reproducers, <laughs> reproducers, you know what I mean? That make all of the music, you know what I mean? And that's just this way that's just where we're at right now, you know. We were you know, just fortunate, man. We were fortunate to live in a time where we had a chance to see, you know, Run DMC, LL Cool J. Um, we, we had a chance to see Prince, we had a chance to see Michael Jackson, we had a chance to see, I mean, just great, talented art, Whitney Houston. I mean, we had we came from an era where music, um, you know, it just that the era was just amazing, and talent I think it mattered. Talent mattered. Talent yeah. mattered. Now what happens is everybody gets exposure because of the internet. So, yeah. you know, you don't have to find talent. What it is is popularity and views and eyes and things and substance takes a back seat. And so the other thing I think they, again, I always say this, they didn't necessarily do it to get rich. Some people got rich from it, but they didn't do it to get rich. I think now the intention is like, True. I want to get famous and rich. True. So that, yeah. that means I got to have a hook that just says the same thing 24 seven and I'll do that to get rich. And I think that's the difference. Yeah, like Ice Cube, Ice Cube said it. He said when they made their records, he said it was happy to be just local, and like you get the club, like I get in the yeah. club and perform. They was happy for that. And yeah, like, that was, like you know, yeah, I tell people all the time, like when, um, when the one of the songs like Black Medallion, when the No Go, hanging out, hanging out, Mace, you know that buddy, 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 all in my face. All they, over didn't, the place. They, they didn't, they didn't care about the gold and jewels. But now it's like the pop, the bottle. It was more about the culture, you know. And yeah. I, killed, I always talk about we had songs like like this in South Apartheid and stuff like that. These kids have nothing to stand on. I mean, when you just said Kevin about the R and B music, just think about R and B. I yeah. don't know an R and B song out right now that you want to go ahead and make love. I don't know one. I think you got a point there. I don't know. I, I really don't know what do y'all do to roll for romance. It is like you know, like hit it from the back. And back the thing back. is, I think maybe their their R and B sex version is like it's very explicit. Like there you know, is no it's very, romance. It's yeah, there. There's no romance. It's it's raw sex and. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's vulgar too, to a certain degree. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's no women. Tell you true, huh? No women. Well, what they're what they're it's doing with, with female, yeah, that's like that's <laughs> that's this that's their love songs. Well, I got one better for you. I think if you're under 30 years of age, you if you're under 30, I don't know that you know uh, what it is to have somebody sing something romantic to you. Yeah, I know. I don't no, know. you know what they yeah. say. We got a couple, uh, a couple, a couple of uh, comments right here. Tim G, there's nothing uh, innovative now. Yeah, there's nothing innovative now. We have so many lanes: X Clan, Karis, mm -hmm. Rock Karen, NWA, B Boys, uh, Fat Boys with the gimmicks, music dance to. This is now, yeah, this is now music to get high to. Some of the artists point. you can't even tell them apart: the men and the women. They're looking alike. It sound like you know. <laughs> hundred <laughs> percent right there. You that know? is true. Yeah, that, you know, that, that's that where is where we are so right true. now. It is where we are right now. You I don't know, know man. But, you know, but, I was telling my kids, I said, I don't know what you're going to listen to musically. I don't know what your thing is. What's going to what you're going to ride out for the rest of your life? And, and it's their time. You know, they have to express themselves. It's their age. You know, so I don't know what they're going to come out with. How they're going to express themselves? How they're going to find their voices? How they're going to find their identity? Explain the identity to the yeah. world. You know, but you know, but no, it is the hip hop was the kids that came out the out, out the uh, civil rights movie too. It was yeah, the yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was yeah. the rebellious kids like that part. The kids yeah. now come out with the selfish generation, which we had with the drug generation and all yeah. kind of stuff like that. So yeah. that's why I don't, I don't know how. If hopefully it could go back to a black supply, like Kelvin, the thing was said, kids could look at this and say, "Man, they may open up a whole new wave of kids being like, I could be like a Karis one. It's okay to be." That yeah. kind of guy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, no, I hopefully, hopefully, 
hopefully that can happen and, well, and with this hip hop thing, man. It'd be great, hopefully, man. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, but the thing is, too, I think to probably to the younger generation today, you know, a guy KRS went up there standing up there with no jury and his and his pants sitting right on his ass. On. I mean, that that's gonna look corny to them, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But the thing mm -hmm. is that I do like about the verses when you bring back the old school guys is I do love that their their careers get somewhat vi revitalized. They they get more um, social media followers and they're gonna get book more gigs now and do more shows where we can actually now go see a show to some degree. You know, yeah. that's the part I like about it as well. Yeah, yeah. And you can bring yeah. your kids to that show. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to worry. Yeah, you don't have to worry about nobody doing nothing inappropriate. You know. Yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. it is. You, you know, they, they they were there to entertain, and now they have classics. And when yeah. you have classics, they're timeless. Yeah, and you yeah. can always. I mean, you know, that's why I was listening to the verses. I mean, they when they was coming out with some stuff. I mean, it was amazing. You know what I mean? I mean, like Smooth Operator came on. He's like, man, I thought he would have to do that early. He didn't. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So they they really did. So it, it's good. And again, it, it represented our the time. And I want to see Slick Rick. I want to see Rakim. I want to see some of them yeah. get yeah. on because they can still do it. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. That like I don't know who told them y'all got too old. Like I don't know who told them that. You know what that's I mean? What, that's what we got to change because we're the only people to call us our artists old school instead of classic, classic right. rock, classic punk, classic jazz, right. classic gospel. Well, this this generation made being older bad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They 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 frowned yeah. upon being old, like they're not gonna get there one day themselves. Yeah, this country yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, Rodney. Hopefully, hopefully, these, hopefully these yeah. motherfuckers hopefully. got fentanyl all over their goddamn yeah. <laughs> their nose and shit like that. Right. But, you know, hopefully. I mean, it's a very nineteen eighties type of feel though, man. Like right now it just feels very eighties, very selfish, very uh, you know commercialism is everything and, and we're, we're prisoners of the moment yeah. we're prisoners of the moment like like for you to have a mtv and have maglamore or whatever they maglamore somebody rapper of the year and mgk and people like that you know i mean yeah because grandma's 32 yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah because grandma's 32 Yo, yeah. I, I, got, I got a question for y'all i got a question for y'all so we're talking about verses and buster rom <laughs> buster rom said Please try to find me a worthy opponent. Who do y'all think can hang with Buster Rhymes? Twenty songs on the show. I think LL, like everybody's saying, L I think LL nah. will be good. Nah, I don't. I don't think that goes together either. I really don't. I don't think oh, that goes together. Nah. I, I got only one for the record. Second. LL is a certified beast. If we do on the verses, LL will be a certified. They, yeah, they both yeah. have a good. They both got yeah, more than yeah, twenty hits. L, 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 they both L, have L, energy. L, Makes you think. Yeah, bro. I mean, like, L do the same show though. About L, but same damn. shit. <laughs> you know, he do that same shit. But, he got like, hits, though, but like, you got to do what you do, D. Yeah, D, you got to do what you do. Damn. Yeah, you know, you yeah I know, I know, D, I know, who, I know. Who is it, D? Who you said is would go up there with Buster? And this is gonna sound crazy, but I'm thinking about you talking about the show, like of how versus is now. Yeah, Missy Elliott. Mm. I can see that they they both really animated. I can see that. So you know what? You know what? That's not bad. I can see that. No, yeah. I can see that. But what threw me off is I I guess I was being chauvinistic. I wasn't thinking about a female. I was me only either. thinking about that's a male. What, that's what makes to me, that's what makes it really special. That was a good you would that was pretty that's good. It. Yeah. That's the only word I could think of. The main stuff I don't, dance, all that. I don't the think energy level be like this all night. Twenty songs of them is energies like this all yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think Q tip would be good. Q tip would be good. No, I think Q tip, yeah, I think Q -tip, Q -tip would not be good. Correct. His that's fame is being in a group. Yeah, yeah it's not as works. a single artist. I think yeah. maybe he's got what three hits as a single artist. Four <laughs> hits. Well, four, Vibrant you know? thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, as as now you talking about tribe called Quest. That's a different story. You know what I'm saying? But nah, not Q tip by itself. Yeah, because you need fight for them. Well, uh, we know we can't have fight. Well, well no, I think, they, I think <laughs> yeah, they you know, be right. If they crossed over women and men, if they didn't, I think, I think you got to get L involved somewhere. I don't think L. First of all, you you talk about people with better than twenty year careers. You know what I mean? And I know their primes are different times. I get that, but I mean. L can drop like like Derek said. L can drop some stuff like I'm L, 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 all night, bro. L, 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 L can have you. L can have you up to until you start making a song, Big Ellie. After that, I'm yeah, done. yeah. After yeah. That, after, after, after Big Ellie, yeah, but he he don't go that far. 
I'm big. He don't have. He don't have to play that deep bells. technically. Is that, I know. I know. His, I need I know. love. His catalog is much bigger than that. Yeah. I know. Oh, I know. Man. I know. From he, uh, on, bro. From I know. He but he can on, bring man. the energy. L is one of these people that you know he gonna bring that energy like Buster. Yeah, yeah. He will because when he, when he does um um that song, then what you call then Buster Rhymes go, baby, when you give it to me. I know what you want. Yeah, yeah. That, that, I can see them right. going those. But they're saying together. that people don't want to face Buster. Nah, Buster's a beat man. I saw Buster in Vegas. It Buster tore Vegas apart, man. It's nothing I like know. a Buster Rhymes show, man. I'm you, telling you, you, that. you gotta understand. Buster got some very high energy songs. <laughs> up, he can he can shut a stadium down because he can those, shut it down, those man. beats, the hooks, the fast rhyming. I mean, it, it's very up tempo, man. I mean, he, he could definitely rock a yeah. rock a show. Yeah, Buster's ill, man. I mean, I I can't. Only person I can see is Missy, LL, and Missy. Yeah. That's about it. And LL, I think I'll put Missy before I put LL against him because okay. it's just the yeah. level of en- the energy level of Buster, man. That, yeah, yeah. And I know Missy had been sick. I don't know if Missy got performance wise 20, 20, um, yeah. 20 songs in a, a, on the stage now. I don't know. You don't see how much yeah, that's, yeah, anymore. Yeah, I don't, I don't think she performs yeah, much. That she, yeah, that's a good question. You know, too. I don't think she was one more. She she came out recently. Like, yeah. yeah, but I don't that that I'll tell you one thing. What I think is gonna happen is in Big Daddy Kane, and I think Harris One exemplified this, you're gonna have to start getting prepared and getting shaped to do this. Yeah, because that well, is going to stage because this is a promotional. Twenty Basically, songs. This is a no promotional. Joke. This is a promotional to go on your 20, 30 uh, show yeah. tours. Yeah, so this is a, this is yeah, a promotional. Right. Well, yeah. any artist should be on shape because doing a show is a lot of energy. You got to jump around. Right. You got to go back and forth. I mean, it's a lot of talking. You can't get out of breath when you're singing, so you need to be in shape. You know, right? right. So here, go, here go another verses they want to say. You said what uh, uh, Drew Hill said. They want to call out anybody they can. Nobody can see them. Drew Hill? Um, Drew Hill. I'm like, I said, I don't know about that. No, problem. somebody told him wrong. Somebody it's told wrong. him wrong. Jodeci, Joe, Joe hey, brother, Joe there you go. Jodeci could give <laughs> Drew Hill a run for that. Jodeci, yeah. boys, the men. Um, I don't think nobody can fuck with Joyce, boys, the men. Yeah, really I'm not glad I'm singing word up. They, it's got to be Jodeci, boys, the men, because they both came out and they they both hit that 1991. Boys, the men catalog is insanity. Insanity. Did you got to? You talking temptations or something, bro? Like, it, like, it's, like it's on that level. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. But it's got to be them against Jodeci. That was their big rival. Making nah, not making <laughs> this. <laughs> hey, man, we love making this. <laughs> your wife got jokes, my you dude. got a good wife, Derek. You got a good wife. <laughs> That's my baby. I support him. You got a good wife. <laughs> New edition. Did they do one yet? Oh no. No, they didn't do no verses. I wonder who they I'll be kind of good to throw they had there. versus against themselves. <laughs> Somebody said, That's a good point. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> That's true. You know, Ralph and Bobby against BBD. Yeah, you know, Bill Bib DeVoe versus New Edition. Didn't Bobby Brown do one? Didn't Bobby Brown do one against somebody? Yeah. Yeah. Keep he, sweat. Now I ain't like that. Who's fat? I, I ain't like Keep Sweat. Oh, that's what it was. Keep oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. right, I just never thought he, you know, keeps a, you know. Yeah, he ain't no that, that wine and stuff is just, you know. And, and all, <laughs> all Bobby had to do was drop my prerogative, don't be cruel in every little step. And that's it. It's that's over. It. Bobby's album alone killed everybody. Yeah. It is. It's yeah. one yeah. album. Yeah. The second yeah. album was dope. Yeah. The second album was fire, man. But Classic. Yeah. Gotta say it's a classic now, man. Yeah, oh, it's no question. Classic. Yeah. No yeah. question. Yeah, that was man. a beast. Let's let's be on entertainment, man. Judge refuses to dismiss Juicy. I mean Jesse Smollett's case for trials <laughs> for November. Juicy so, Smollett. <laughs> so his trials gonna go to new, November, but then uh, people forgot the allegations of saying that he was beat up and uh, just put a just come out and say, <laughs> come out and say you lied. Come out and say you whatever your judgment was impaired. Just you know, there's there's a certain point where the lie is over, right? There's a certain point where the lie is over, and I think he doesn't want to pay. They want to charge him for all of the resources that they expended trying to solve this. Correct. You know what I mean? And they want, they want, to, they want to recoup man hours. I still want to know why. It cost you being on the show. I mean, I just would I would like to know why. Like all see, see what bothers me is all the stuff that people do when they literally have a real racial issue. For you to come and stage something, it makes no sense. I know, I know. It's such a slap in the face that cry wolf crap is such a you know what I'm saying. And you give you you know you give credibility to those that that act like there's some type of race card people play. 
you just created it and played it is the dumbest yeah. thing in the world. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know they. I, I think they're trying to um, make an example of um, Jesse Smolnick. Um, what he did was, I thought, definitely set us back a few years. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and you you got to look at the severity of what he did. The only defense that I could say is like when they put pursuing a case against him. Um, I think his lawyer's defense is probably going to be that other people have made false reports before and they've never been faced with this, how something this serious about being convicted, which they may have a point and they're, and they're doing it to him because he's a celebrity and he did this, but they definitely are trying to make an example out of Jesse Smalley. And, in my opinion, a little bit rightfully so. He should have never did that shit. Yeah, there was no reason. There it. It was right, no legitimate right. reason to do something None. like this. And, you know, especially when you consider where we are allegedly. right now. Allegedly. But, but <laughs> what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, is, think about it. Realistically, when you think of a black man and you think of a noose around his neck, yeah. I mean, that is something that, I mean, I, I mean, it, it, it's just putrid. And for you to simulate that, if he is lying and, you know, so I'm just trying to do like you allegedly, but we all believe I'm sure that he's lying for you to do that. It's a slap in the face to people that have been had family members lynch and things like that for you to sit there and do. First of all, you going out to subway sandwich place at two in the morning. Right. Mm-hmm. Then the thing is, suppose you take powder and throw it over yourself you take this, you call the cops, and when they get there, you still got the noose around you your neck. That's I mean, the thing that, that's I mean, the yeah, thing that made him think it was bullshit. You still had the noose on. You're in act, you know what I do if I'm him? I'm like, look, I was getting prepared for a role. I did all this just preparing for a role. I wanted to see, I was doing a reality show and nobody knew it. Because this is the dumbest thing ever. Kelvin, if I'm not mistaken, he wore the noose all the way to the hospital. He's right. I remember yeah, that. He walked away right. to the hospital. Right. Right. That's not normal behavior of anybody that's been traumatized like that. You right. want that noose off your neck immediately. Right. And that's what that's what that's what kind of guided the police to that this guy may not be telling the truth. I, you way. know, the, the lawyer should go with the temporary insanity. He's got to do it. There's no other way. Even though it was so premeditated, it's got to be. There's no other way that you can explain this. You're already famous. You already have money. You got a successful show. You got a successful career. And now you need to stoke the flames of race more for what? And it's not yeah. even real. And, and you, the two guys that helped them, they they cooperated. And they should. Yeah, and they I, should. I ain't going down for Juicy. Right. Who's your co-defendant? Juicy. He ain't go to jail with a co-defendant named Juicy. You know, now, now, let me ask you this question. Do you remember? Do you, do you remember the the uh, the Olympics in Brazil when the uh, I think his name is Lockett, Lock or something like that. The uh, white boy. Lock, the white boy. Yeah, the white boy. Right. Yeah, yeah, boy. yeah. And then he goes and says that he was held up. Yeah. Like at gunpoint. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, the next day he's on a Today Show. And he's like, you know, the guy put the gun in my face and said, get down. Yeah. I'm like, dude, whatever. And I'm like, so now you got to lie and make yourself a hero yeah. in the story and then get caught out there. And Brazil was really working hard to say, we want to make sure none of our athletes get in any type of problem so people know about the, you know, the danger in Brazil. And to do that, I don't understand what goes into that mindset. I don't know if you need to be like a hero or you need to be a victim. I don't know what it is. Or you're just seeking some attention. I don't right. know. Right, you know? right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but it's insane. Right. I mean, the, the, I'm, um, Juicy said, um, I mean, you went too far, guy. I mean, you should have did this. Should have allegedly should have did it. <laughs> yeah. I, I just feel like it was the biggest waste of time when you when you really look back and just look at his motivations allegedly. Um, yeah. and you know, and just, <laughs> and and just where we are, just kind of like you know, in a society in terms of culture right now, you know, and and views, it just seems like the biggest waste of time, man. You just, like, you just really killed yourself for what, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, you... But wait a minute, wait a minute. That happened. Hold on a second. We keep saying allegedly. Didn't they fire him from the show because of that? Yeah. Allegedly. What did he get fired for? That's what I want to know. You know, allegedly like, for lying. Yeah, allegedly for lying, <laughs> making this thing up. Yeah. 
allegedly. Yeah, man, you gonna jam us up. Juice, Juice, <laughs> <on the floor. laughs> Juice, Juice ain't coming over to sue us. Buy little, buy little and shit. And plus, he gonna need he gonna need the money soon. So up. Mm-hmm. you know, you don't know remind me of. It remind me of I was recently rewatching the R. Kelly interview with with um Gail yeah. King. He's like, guys, there are real girls out there being abducted. There's real girls being raped. I'm like, yes, that's what you hear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, actually, the girls are safer because you're right here right now. <laughs> They're actually safer. Right, that's what I'm saying. He's like, y'all wasting time on me. There's real predators. No, no, no. You are the real leader. <laughs> he was getting antsy because the interview was taking too long. He wanted to be out there being a predator. So he said, I, I got to get right. out of here. You guys are killing me right here. I got to do the interview. Like, look, I got, I ain't got no babysitter tonight. I got to get (laughs) out of here. Oh, man. God. Allegedly. 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 All right, I'm a, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna I'm a tell on myself. I gotta share this story. And this is, but I, in my defense, I was a kid, just being stupid. This, this back in the early '80s, my mother gives me twenty dollars to go to the store and get some potato chips. Now you remember the old like wise bag of potato chips be like ninety nine cent back in the day. My mother gave me a twenty. She probably just wanted change. I go to the store, buy the stuff, and in my mind, I'm like. I want to keep this change. Mm. I take the $19 and put it in my Spider-Man piggy bank. And my mother's like, where's my change? I say the man didn't give me any change. And in my mind, she's going to eat that $19. My mother gets in the car, brings me up there, and she ready to spaz out on the dude at the deli. The man's like, miss, I gave your son the change. Here I go stupid in the background. No, you don't. You didn't give me no change. You just want me to get a beating. That's what it was. And I mean, when I tell you, my mother found that money in that Spider Man bank. I'll tell you. I mean, I'm telling you. We're trying. I'm trying to tell you. I just, you know what I did? I went outside and got some powder for the noose around my neck. That was a good one, man. That was a good one. At least I was a kid, though. At least I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, so funny. Christina's work, work, uh, did some recent work with uh, Jesse Smollett. So, um, I guess I don't know when it comes out. That's so crazy. So, has he made a statement? Hold on, I'm still on a page. Yeah, huh? Has he ever made a statement? Has he done an interview since then? I don't recall. I'm not sure. He did an interview. One, I think he I saw, won. Yeah, he did one. No, he right? did an interview before he got caught. That's the one I saw. Yeah, okay. that's the yeah. Before and he, he maintained the story. Correct. Yeah, he yeah, maintained yeah, the story. Speaking. Like Ronnie say, standing on his bo- on his square. So on his uh, square. Yeah, so he's strong and wrong, but fuck it, you know. You got to know when to fold him, bro. Alleg- allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> Don't come for us, goddamn it. <laughs> yeah, man. Don't be protesting in front of my house. Word, I was in that. Don't talk about juicy. Don't talk about juicy. <laughs> oh man, fucking juicy, baby. Mm. No, no, no. They're gonna juice his ass in November. This is messed up, man. I don't know how this is so fun. Dr. Dre was served divorce uh, legal divorce papers at his grandmother's cemetery, man. I mean, I mean, god damn. The grandmother's man. funeral. Grandmother's funeral, yeah. Grandma, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm, re- I'm reading off my uh, uh janky ass producer. Jamie wrote that on there, so I'm just reading over <laughs> my script. Yeah. Oh man, you didn't think you snitched, did you? Snitched. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. to the bottom. <laughs> fix his back, fix his back, man. Fix his back. Yeah. Come on, Jamie. Come on, Jamie. See, jinky ass. Anyhow, <laughs> wait, stop. Y'all messing up my Wi Fi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't move him around too much and knock it off. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So, so, so it's Dr. Drake. Rodney, go ahead, man. Right. You're one of my divorced brothers, man. <laughs> let, let me tell you something, right? Like, yeah, as D just as D just told, I'm I'm divorced, but previously divorced. There has to be a line drawn somewhere. You know what I mean? Like, there has to be in divorces that are, there's a line that you can't cross. Now, I know people get emotional and they get in their feelings, but I don't know that I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a benefit of the doubt. Was this a tactic that maybe her lawyer did to really piss him off? Mm, or does she really know that 
they were going to serve him at the funeral. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's he, maybe, he definitely told him that his grandmother died. This is the best time to serve him. The wife definitely told him where he's at. Yeah, yeah. That's, see, I'm, I was trying to reach for a minute, but then you realize the reach is too short, G. <laughs> but the thing is, I mean, divorce is a nasty game, man. It's a very dirty game, but like I said, there should be lines that shouldn't be crossed, and I don't know. Maybe she crossed the line, or maybe the lawyer crossed the line. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure Miss Dr. Dre is not a very happy camper right now about this, you know. But yeah, it's, it's, it's nice ugly. You did it more discreet. Like that was publicly done, and they knew yeah. they were gonna be there. You might have people covering the funeral because you know he's a, yeah. he's a big time he's, he's a celebrity. celebrity. You know, so it's like, come on, man. Like it got to I, I know it's no, it's no. No fairness in war, but God damn, even sometimes people say like, you know, back in the day when they, they Rome, like Troy, when they had a certain, like when um people died, they give seven days or a prince died, like chill, yeah. let's pause the war for like seven days. Or Correct. Like, yeah. Like, come on, you, you're going to catch Dr. Drake somewhere. He's not going to be hiding somewhere. He's going to have to be somewhere. And right yeah. like, at, the, at the funeral, yeah. man. Let me tell you something, right? I remember when um I was going through my divorce, I remember calling my ex-wife and I said, listen, we don't serve each other papers. At each other's job. Now I knew I was opening the door for it. I always said, I always said to her, if you have anything for me, you call me and I'll go to your lawyer and I will pick it up. You don't have to search for me. All you gotta do is call me. Say my lawyer got some papers for you, and I would go pick them up. You know, but I seen when I was working, lots of cops got served at work. Man, lots of know, cops got served at work. You know what's funny, man? This whole situation reminds me of that scene in the wire. Where uh, you know Omar's taking his grandmother to church and she got yeah. a hat on. Yeah, and he yeah, yeah. yeah. Her. Correct. You know Correct. I mean? Yeah, it's not a Sunday. And they're not supposed yeah. to shoot on Sunday. They're not supposed not to have Sunday. no shoot yeah. on yeah. Sunday. Yeah. Exactly. Why well, how you gonna serve that man? <laughs> you know what I mean? Why he's burying his grandmother? You know, it's like yeah. there's no honor in that at all, man. That's Technically, his mother, the woman raised him. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah, his yeah. mother. Right. This is beyond that. Know, so yeah, I'm not, it's just a deep situation, man. I can't even imagine it. And I've obviously I've never been involved in a divorce, thank God, you know. But uh, I, I, but um, and I have no intentions. But man, if it's like that, man, it, it, I don't know what to say. You know, it's amazing how you can how you can have a person where you can say I love you to a person, and you have this person have so much love and emotion and memories with him, and they just see the whole thing just change on his, on his head, man, and to the point that they yeah. do something like that. It's amazing to me. Well, there's a lot of influence there, too, but we're going to save some of this divorce, because I think next week we're going to have a divorce segment. Next yeah, week, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, let's, let's but uh, divorce is some very ugly stuff, you know what I'm saying? It's very ugly. And, it, and the person you married is not the person that you're divorcing. It's not the same person. Yeah, no, I understand that. You know, nobody yeah. wants love and the divorce. They want money. Money, correct. It, be <laughs> it becomes strictly business, like EPMD, strictly business. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Word up, man. Word up. You know. Oh, man. Speaking of some, we saw my R. Kelly's a slime ball. This is the guy, man. Africa Mimbata sued for alleged child oh, sexual, uh, uh, sexual abuse. <laughs> Man, if everybody know uh, Planet he made Planet Rock and stuff like that, man. But we, we heard about these these alleged claims of this years ago with African Mbada. I remember his role manager spoke out about him to go into Africa and and I guess buying boys to do these alleged acts. So thoughts on this gentleman? Yeah, I mean, yeah, African Mbada had a huge history of allegedly, uh, you know, assaulting children. And young boys and stuff like that. There's there's guys that have come out. I think there's a um, social media personality that came out and said that he was um, molested by uh, African Bambada, allegedly. But uh, I mean, he this is this has been floating in the air for a long time, you know. And I don't see how so many people can make allegations like this without there being definitely some some substance mm -hmm. there. You know what I mean? Too many people have been. Mm -hmm. So you, you look at it almost like a Bill Cosby type of situation where there's so much smoke that has to be fired. You Correct. Know? Correct. Yeah, so, Correct. You know, I, I, I guess so. You know, um, that is, to me, the most heinous crime that you could commit, I feel. You know what I mean? Um, I can't think of anything that's quite, I mean, it's just rape. It's rape, you know? Um 
So, so yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what to say about this guy. It's it's hard to, almost like an R. Kelly situation. It's hard to, um, on one hand, separate his act allegedly um, from his music, you know, and from his influence over the music that I love and um, and the culture that I love, and which has been so instrumental in my personal growth uh, and my own identity, you know. Um, so it's just kind of hard to divorce it, man. It's, it's hard to understand it to be the same. But I love Planet Rock, man. I, you know, I love, I love his music. I love, I love their music, man. You know, um, it might be one of my favorite, might be one of my top five favorite songs, man. To be honest with you, you know. And, and I, yeah, I think I you it. could still, I, I think you could still, you know, it, it depends on the person. Uh, sometimes I can't listen to certain things anymore because it just it brings me back to the person. But I think it's fair if a person says, hey, I like the song, what they produce. I, the thing that bothers me is I think you can tell a lot of times when someone is guilty by the way they defend themselves. Or what lack of. What would, what would you say? What would you say? What, because what, what I'm saying is this. If you accuse me of something, right? And you say, well, Kelvin did something foul or did something with an underage girl or something like that, right? I'm not only saying it's not true. I'm not going to be up here somewhere. My lawyer said, not, no, no, no. I'm telling you right <laughs> now, you can write it down. It's not true. Yeah. It didn't happen or whatever. That's what I'm saying. And to me, like you said, these rumors have been floating around for years. I don't think he's been strong enough in his defense of it or whatever no. like that. Because no, I'm you, saying, you if, if you say it's me, I'll stand there on the stage with the accuser. And I say, every bit of proof you have, you can show it right now. Yep. You can show it right now. And you know, I think Kelly was sitting there on an interview, and they said, did you watch the tape? He told me, no, I didn't watch the tape. Right there. Has, 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 has he been, like, has he, has he been charged yet, though? Like, in certain, has he actually, has anyone actually heard him say the words, I didn't do it? Oh, uh, African Mabada? Yeah, either, either, either. In I think he's denied it in the past. He denied. He denied it. And remember, somebody yeah. stabbed him. Remember, he got stabbed up. Yeah, 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 yeah. So somebody was trying to kill his ass. But he, he, him. no, he, not, he hasn't been arrested for anything. I think he's just being sued right now for it. Right. I think one of one of um one of his alleged victims is suing him for it. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Finally, I think what happened is this R. Kelly stuff finally is about to break the floodgates open. People yeah. are just really going to go after this stuff now. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, just a, a fantastic talent, man. Um, you know, but love. Yeah, we we should have saw this coming. Let me ask you this question: Was was uh, African Mbada and them the hip hop village people? That's did a good they, question. They, they were modeled them? after him. You <laughs> have you seen that? You seen the album covers? And you, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I'm, just, I'm just saying. It makes one thing. I have a yeah. point. You might have a point there. Got a point. Yeah. <laughs> Kara's defended him. Which yeah, I remember that. Before. Right, yeah, Tiger. I remember, I remember that. Yeah. That's another yeah. thing I'm not doing. I'm not defending you more than you do. Yeah, yeah, got yeah. Point there on that as well. And I realize I'm I'm also not going to defend something I can't prove or disprove. Correct. And the thing is, you got to be careful. With me don't mean you ain't do that. Correct. Correct. You got to be careful when you yep. um, defend somebody, especially about a, a subject like that. You That's know right. what I mean? Because the thing is, like, I want to know how you even accidentally get accused of something like that. Mm. Right. You know what I'm saying? The thing several is, that's times. not several, yeah, times. several times, <laughs> several times. The thing is, that's not like 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 Derek said, where there's smoke, there's fire. No, nobody gets accused of something <laughs> like that numerous times. People go their whole life and never get accused of something right. like that. Right. And it's not like you're the biggest star in the world. I like somebody yeah, trying to yeah, go, yeah. They can go after a lot more people. And he ain't rich so, either. He ain't rich either. That's what I'm saying. You know, anybody like, hey, I gotta get that 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 Planet Rock royalty. Nah, I think yeah. what it is. <laughs> and, and allegedly, there's like a little bit of group of guys that he was doing it with. Yeah, allegedly. yeah, yeah. As I'm saying, well, they the hip hop village people. I'm just saying. Yeah, but that's different. That's still different than pedophilia, though. That's true. They were grown. Yeah, yeah. They, was, yeah. they were doing yeah. grown. Yeah. Yeah. They, 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 they were yeah. grown men. That was that's true. That's very yeah. True. That's something else, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. just, that, like that's reprehensible. People will kill you over their kids. I mean, that's just the yeah. bottom line. And, and and to me, we have to be honest. It's a sickness. It is. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah. know what oh, yeah. you can oh, do yeah. about the sickness. I don't know how you. Roddy always said it's not treatable. It's not. It's not, not treatable. treatable. It's not. He's right. Not treatable, and it's not rehabilitatable. Right. You can't. When you come out of jail, you're going to do it again. You're gonna do it again. 
And the only thing that's gonna stop you from doing it again unless you're like maybe 97 years old. <laughs> no, if you if it was my child, I know something that's gonna stop you from doing it. It's yeah. called the, the bullet. You're not gonna age out. I can tell you that. <laughs> but the thing is, you're not gonna age I, out. I don't want to make any open confessions on this show. Yeah, true. But the thing is, like I told you, we're not going through no trials. We're not going through no I'm juries. We're not doing none of that. We're not doing none of that. No, but I know how the system works. The system is going to make is going to victimize your kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. All right, man. Speaking of systems, LA County wants Vanessa Bryant to undergo a, a psychiatric psychiatric examination with her. I think she has a lawsuit going on against them for um, releasing these pictures of her husband and daughter. Uh, crash on the, the, at the crash site and they, and their bodies and yeah. stuff like that. So, yeah, Vanessa Bryan is Kobe Bryant's wife. Oh, yeah, widow, Kobe Bryant actually, Kobe Bryant's widow, widow, and she has a lawsuit against Los Angeles um, County, um, where the helicopter crash took place, and they want her to take a psychiatric evaluation to prove if she's been distressed or distorted over pictures of the scene being released by firemen and um, deputy sheriffs. I think it's freaking ridiculous mm -hmm. that they would do that. You know, now the thing is, I feel Kobe Bryant's wife had probably has a lawsuit strong enough to probably bankrupt Los Angeles County. Mm. I really do. You know, I don't know if you guys remember, that's why the Biggie Tupac um, yep. never got solved because there was LA cops involved and that lawsuit would have bankrupt LA. You know, so that's why they made sure that that case never got solved. And I think this is the same thing. They are just another thing, too. They're not denying that it it happened. They basically found out that um, some firemen or some deputy sheriffs showed the pictures to a bartender in the bar. And that um, that it was basically proven already that this happened. Then you had the governor create a new law that says that if any first responders release yep. release um, pictures of a scene, now it's breaking the law. So they're not denial that this happened. No, what the, the issue is, Rod, the issue is whether it caused her stress, which is what she's doing, what she's suing for. Correct. The bottom line is this, the question whether she was, was caused her stress as a result of losing her daughter and her husband in a car crash, and then their bodies to be released on photos, I think she is under some serious stress for for, for that. And I think she's doing the right thing. And she well, the people that, that, that right, but of course they're gonna, of course they're going to, you know, what happens is when it comes to paying money out, you know, I remember my house got robbed, and I'm thinking everybody can be some old, oh, we're sorry, no insurance company is like, you got any pictures of the stuff that you said you lost? Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you that's, to, you that's, a, that's a little big, big difference. Yeah. No, no, that's what I'm saying is, in other words, it, it, just because you're victimized and somebody got to pay you, and they're going to sure. try not to pay you. Yeah, right. well, the thing and is, there's, words, something saying, called, there's something called settling, too, when right, you're right. wrong. But I'm saying, she's suing over duress, right? They yeah, want to know, well, we want to know if you was really stressed. But right. you know, but let me ask you a question. How many people have had to have psychiatric evaluations for lawsuits like that? This is not mm -hmm. common. It's not common at all. This is a stall tactic. That's what it is. I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. I can see mm -hmm. that. You know, listen, they, anything not to give that money, they would if they could buy more time on the clock, whatever they'll do. Yeah. They, yeah. They're going to do it. Yeah. I mean, we, we know, obviously, this is ridiculous. But, I mean, of course, they're going to go for it. That's how they are. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I, I hope that she fights until the end. I hope she does bankrupt the ass. Well, she got because the ammunition to go through with it. I can tell you got, that. She got money to make it ride all the way. Yeah. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And then, like, you know, Biggie probably say, oh, he's a gangster rapper, or whatever you want to say, but it ain't have that kind of money like Kobe Bryant wife. Right. She got millions of fans. She got, right. she got millions of fans that, that that man had that would actually pay the legal fees for her. <laughs> like, yeah. That's, see, that's what the thing is, too. She has access to attorneys that could blow the frame off, like I said, Los Angeles County. And that's what they were afraid. That's of. what you say, Rod. They're gonna settle. They, they, they have no settle. choice. They're gonna they settle. have no choice. Is, does she want to settle? Because she don't need to settle. No, she doesn't need to settle. That oh, maybe be, that may man. be a problem as well. That's why I said she probably has a lawsuit strong enough to yeah. bankrupt them. Because money ain't. She got ninety nine problems, but money ain't one. Money, of them. money ain't one of them. Yeah, right. money she ain't one of them. Own self, then, if that's the case, man. You know, she might. <laughs> and let's face the facts. You know, first responders do do that. They yeah. absolutely do it. They absolutely do it. 
you got a motive, you got a city motivated by how you got a city motivated by money like that, you know. Um, she better watch her own self, man, because you know, like you say, she's got she's got a war chest for real. She got nothing but time. She can sit back, and she can and with and access to the best lawyers, she can get the best outcome that you know. But um, you know, they fighting for they they might if it's well, what you're saying is true, Roddy. Then you know, L.A. is fighting for their financial life, man. You yeah. know, so mm -hmm. no, no telling how desperate they'll get. You know? Well, think of the psyche of somebody. I wouldn't even want that those images on my phone. Word. Oh. Well, you, you know? got some people that are very morbid, and you got to realize that you know maybe somebody was thinking maybe they could actually sell the pictures as well. That's yeah, so man. 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 All money ain't good money. I know that. Right. Okay. I, don't know. I, I, I don't even see those kind of things. I remember my, uh, a family member of mine showed me pictures of my father's funeral. I didn't want to see my father in the corporate anymore. I had that one day I had to deal with that. I didn't want to see that no more. Mm -hmm. But show it to me at Thanksgiving. I'm like, what the fuck are you showing me these things for? So what? I was like, yeah, man. Yeah, man. They, my brought, it, they brought it to Thanksgiving. Word to everything I love, bro. Wow. Now, wow. what they used to do was take pictures of people in the casket for people that couldn't make the funeral back in the day. I know, but I don't want to. Like, I was there. I'm with, I'm with you, though. I was, front, I was front row. Like, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to. No, I'm good. I don't need to see that. You know what I do, I as a eulogist now, you know, a lot of funerals I go to, I don't even look in the casket mm. anymore because I don't need to see the person in that state. I remember, exactly. you know what I'm saying? They never look the same anyway, man. To me, I, yeah. every time I looked at it, they never looked itself, man. You know? I, I look at it way. like it's not even them anymore anyore anyway, really really yeah, it it so it's not yeah. even you know it's just the housing it's not it's just yeah, that's it's why i don't go to cemeteries and talk to the tombstone it does nothing for me not 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 knows that dude just doesn't doesn't work for me i feel you on that one man man speaking of something else that was kind of bugged out this past weekend nba fans criticized britney reina instagram celebrity here be a model for shamelessly searching for another Young boy on a college, I think what college was Mississippi State, something like that. She went to a third grade college, I'm talking about hide your boys. I'm here on campus. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> said, Hide your sons, hide your yeah, kids, hide your sons. Yeah. 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 You can imagine if one of us would have said that hide your girls be on campus. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh, yeah. <laughs> what would have happened? Ain't that some shit? Hey, I mean, yeah, you know, she's, 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 she's a business, yeah, she's a big, she's a businesswoman, you know, yeah, she's a businesswoman. And to be honest with you, I think. I think she's gonna snag somebody again because these you guys just it. don't get it. You know it. They don't Young get boys it. Ain't got the sis guard trying to give them, man. That thing yeah. get hard in the morning. You know, you, you know, this reminds me of <laughs> this reminds me of I think what Derek said earlier about certain lines or or maybe Rodney, um, when you were talking about the going to serve papers at Dr. Dre's um uh grandmother's funeral. But certain lines to me. You know, at, at the end of the day, for you to do something like this, you have children. In other words, you one day can explain to your child how they came about. You know what I'm saying? That you was just a gold digger. And I, I just think, you know, I know today is the Instagram and the model and the exposure and trying to have all the value for whatever. I just think it's too much. I just think we, we've we overplayed it, you know, and, and for you to constantly do that. There, to me, there's brokenness somewhere. That's not normal for a, a young lady to just want to sit there and, and create that culture. You know what I'm saying? You should think enough of yourself that you could actually go ahead and do something in this world other than take away from somebody else that's doing something just to exploit them. That's what I would think. Yeah. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't think that way. No, though. they don't. Yeah. They don't. We're in a different culture now, but I mean, I, I don't have any respect for that. You know, one day that, that'll be a child, not just a lottery ticket. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're looking, you're looking for more lottery tickets. She is. Oh, yeah. Listen, that's a professional. She's, she's, she's a professional. Strike. Yeah, she knows she got a, she got a good maybe and maybe because she's young. What 24, 20 She might have another yeah. five year run, maybe. Because there was yeah, another maybe. new young hot thing coming right behind her, so she oh, might. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. So. She got to secure that bag right yeah. now, man. You know what? What happened to working? <laughs> like what? <happened? laughs> that's like, too slow. That's yeah. Too slow. That's what I'm saying. Like you know, I don't that's think she's gonna find a job making like a hundred thousand and some change a month. You know, mm -hmm. a month, not a year, a month. Yeah, yeah. she make it what? Hundred? You said hundred thousand a month, right? What yeah, it's it? like a hundred. I think it was a hundred thousand. Yeah, hundred thousand a month. Yeah, month. change a month. Yeah, a month. And and this guy's career. And this guy's career. Like, come on, NBA career. He might last another four years, maybe, maybe five years. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's over. Well, maybe, 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 maybe she's maybe she's looking for insurance in case maybe his career is shortened. You know? Yeah. And yeah. Catch somebody else. 
No, that's our profession, bro. You, some people play ball, and you know she, she's a certified thotosaurus rex. And not, and but not only that, to own it, and now you're gonna market it. You're gonna own it. You're gonna market it. Now you're gonna, you know, all the criticism you receive. Now you're gonna take it and try to just build upon that, just to throw it back in people's face. It's not a good look. Yeah, yeah. you're gonna have somebody mother come and confront you, and it's not gonna be good either. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, somebody's yeah, sister. She's not certified. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you better watch out for. Somebody, yeah. somebody's yeah. sister with a hair yeah. scarf yeah. on and Vaseline <laughs> on her face. <laughs> Aaron, no no, Aaron, Aaron. no Aaron. earrings on. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yo, right. They ain't got nothing to lose. They in Mississippi. You know they ain't got nothing to lose. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is, you got to realize if you're working with some paper, you get somebody's ass whipped for thirty five dollars <laughs> and a, a fish sandwich. Yeah, the big sandwich is some they neighborhood. Like. <laughs> Girl, listen, they just got free. Yeah. You know, they, got, <laughs> they got nothing to lose in Mississippi, man. You know, yeah. like, he's talking about, like, bad behavior with uh, bad choices, like, out here, man. So, it was a fight. It was a, a football game this weekend, man. And this this uh, lady decides she wants to uh, spit on somebody. Uh, fellas, I want to see what you want to do. I want you guys to see the video. Uh, Jamie, can you go to show the people the video, please? Oh, nice. That was a lungy. That was like she drank milk and spit that. That was a big one. We all saw she got away? She walked out? Let me tell you something. She would have never made it to the steps. (laughs) You ever see a rhino charging? <laughs> you like this yeah. going up. Yeah. You the that's what you would have saw. Like, nah, you, I, I would have fucked up that day. Yeah. <laughs> I would have fucking threw everything away that day. I'd have fucked you up. You risked it all, right? <laughs> hey, you don't slap a person and you don't spit on a person. Oh man. And, and see what happens is this that protection that you're offered because of the gender thing. Yeah, it's out the Those window. Those two things will wave, right? That, yeah. that that's why people need to understand that. Like there's certain things. That see, I know people, and I know you guys know people like this too. They only know how to answer conflict with aggression. That's yeah. it. And yeah. if you run into that type of person, then that's just it. Yeah. You know, Ooh. now you give the guy credit for restraint. I know a lot of people, most people, that would have been it, right? That in her last game in life. That'd have been <laughs> it. That'd have been that been what they call an elimination game. Yeah, yeah. correct. Correct. Every time she would have saw baseball, she would have been traumatized. <laughs> Every time. If, yeah, if a baseball know. had a roll across the street, she would have been traumatized. I'm Everything you. with baseball. <laughs> she they, they, uh, she knew, you shouldn't be facing that brother from Pittsburgh uh, Steelers. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's somebody. No, what she needed right. was my man with the eight ball jacket on the side. Oh. <laughs> That's what she needed. Oh, my God. That's what she needed. My <laughs> man, bro, if I was eight ball, I'd have brought that jacket back with his handprint on it. Yeah, that's a very and I want to set some straight. Right <laughs> not <promoting>, <laughs> not <laughs> promoting violence against women. No, 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 no. No, but we we I don't see that as a lady at that point. Hey, look, look, we got a woman that made a comment, so we, it's not just us. Hey. That's, more than, that's more than a woman right there. That's a that's a, that's a bodyguard right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The thing <laughs> is, too. <laughs> My wife would have came out. My wife, my wife would have came out of retirement, boy. Uh, Coach, put me in. She said, "Woo, sit back, big fella. I got this one." Oh, man. <laughs> man, she'd have been four. She would have been what you say, four, four hours down yeah. in the next. Yeah, time. she'd have dragged her from the bottom of the steps to the top. Yeah. I, I would have been mad just being somebody, seeing somebody get spit on. She would have never got out that section. Oh, oh man, no, it's like the no, rape no. thing. I'm like, yo, you spit on that man, like, yo, you know, you're gonna face this. Get this smoke, yeah. get this smoke. Like, I'm gonna block that. I was like, nah, nah, face that smoke because there's no way you right. can spit on me and right. walk away from that, shit. right? Mm-mm. No way. We no. went to jail that night, it would have been just jail, it would have been over, yeah. it would have been jail. That's all. Like, yeah, I, I, I felt very comfortable <laughs> doing that. Yo, to be yo, honest, like, like, that's like that's a go to move for her. Yeah, that's what it as is, soon like. as you would have called me, D, the bail money would have been on its way. As <laughs> soon as you had told me what happened, I said, Say no more, the bail money's on its way. Say what is possible. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I told you, I, I probably, as soon as I went to go to her, she'd be like, Nah, I got this one. This was all me. <laughs> right? This was all me. <laughs> You just yeah. keep the crowd back. <laughs> like, listen, and me, if any dude that would have stepped in her for her aid, 
they would have got that smoke too. Yeah, you can't get sued. You, you can't. You can't defend that. You Word can't. Up. You know. You can't defend that. That that behavior is unacceptable. And you yeah. can see it was already calmed down. You just doing that over some because I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the arrogantness of how she just walked up the stairs nonchalant, like it was all good. Right. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. No, she yeah. don't. She knew what it was. She, she would never did that. She would never did that. She would never did that at a Pistons game. Uh, man. <laughs> man. Right? I don't know mm. historical black college dude that came in and did that shit. It would have been over. Yeah, been over. <laughs> grand opening, grand closing, boy. Yeah. yeah, exactly. yeah I don't but I don't know what makes you think you could do that to somebody. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's the society we in today, you know? Yeah, man. I don't mm -hmm. know, man. Like, I... I couldn't even imagine spitting on, no matter how angry I am, I, I couldn't imagine spitting on somebody like that. No. No. Yeah. No. It wouldn't even, I don't think it would even enter my mind. No. Yeah. What do you do as a man, though? Do you just fire up, man? Say you got, because I don't know if he was with anybody. You know, I, you know, I would have been my wife. Rodney probably would have been with his wife, right? With a situation like that. But as a man, if that happens, man, how do you react to that? I think, it would have, I think it would have been a. I think it would have been a, a spur of the moment thing. I think somebody doesn't know how they react. All I know is I think before they know it, the, the dude with the eight ball jacket said he never hit a woman before in his life. But my right. man became a pro at that moment because yeah. people just not. <laughs> you know, no, I'm just saying, saying like for real. <laughs> if, if you go back and look at that, how he can swing a full slap and not hit that pole? That, that, that <laughs> made, I mean, it was just like it was destined. And the girl said. She'll be 60 something years old one day and remember that slap. She said it changed her life. Yeah. She said she realized she was wrong. She yeah. realized she was wrong. And this woman would have had the same realization. This yeah. woman had the same realization. Yeah. I'm telling yeah. you, every time she spit, yeah. she had to do it. If she goes to the laws work, they say spit. She say, You sure? That's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, doing the laws work, right? <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, people not trying to hear it. Kevin, yeah, you know my Change mind. Your heart and mind. Hit him in my song. Who you gotta try? Who you gotta try? Try, try Jesus. <laughs> Don't try me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, brothers, this was a good show tonight, man. We had a good one, man. Um, can't wait to see y'all next week. Like my man Ronnie said, we're gonna have uh we're gonna talk about divorce. We're gonna have a specialist on it, right, Ronnie? Uh, I think we, we're gonna talk about divorce and we're gonna talk about it from the female and the male perspective. There it is. There it and is. And I want to tell you this before you go. I just want to say I know it looked like my Wi-Fi went down. Somebody came and served me papers. That's why they did it. Why I want to say they knew that was So I apologize. Very wrong, man. Very wrong, man. Oh yeah. man. All right, my brothers, man. Love y'all, man. Peace, peace, and peace.